Divine fan. They have renamed. We've gone back to Team Burger, oh. uh, which is exciting for me, especially because we've got Sharky coming in. The return of one of the greatest players in APAC South history. One of the only ones to ever pick up a land trophy. Uh, of course, Sharky, uh, I think he basically said something like, you know, he, he kind of felt like he'd achieved what he needed to. Uh, <laughs> and then he kind of retired. Now he's back. I guess he just couldn't keep his hands off the keys. Yeah, we love it, it when they come out of the retire home, don't we, Dax? <laughs> uh, I, I gotta say, it's just incredible to see they couldn't get through the preseason qualifier, but Team Burger, Bath and Business, and of course Sharky, Reignite fame, Dark Zero fame, you're gonna see Pricey as well, a very familiar face with each other. And on the other side, one of the teammates Sharky had in the preseason qualifier for Tom Yum Kangaroo, if I remember that team correctly, <laughs> Killapuzz has also returned to competition. He's gonna be joining Team Akuma, and they're going to be, I believe, the only triple controller team right now that we have here in Apex out. I'm very interested to see a different kind of input, of course, in a region dominated by mouse and keyboard. This is one of the standouts, really, from Tom Young Kung and their finals run. And the thing is, Killapaz, he had so many offers to actually play for different teams, but he stuck with an Aussie duo just like he did back in Champs, and he's ready to go again. Yeah, and having a look at this, you know, we'll have a look at the scoreboard and we can show you guys what we're up to because uh, we've we've had one week. Um, so these are obviously the scorings here, boogie boards out on top and then Lightning Unicorn coming in second. So we are itching and ready to go. We have A versus uh, C today. So as you can see, we have a couple of teams on the board uh, and then we have C with no points just yet, but they're going to show us what they can do today as we're itching and ready to go. This is our first match of the day. We are heading to Storm Point, this is A versus C, and I'm excited to see what we can show you from our region. Hmm, I mean, having a look at some of the other teams further down this list, uh, I mean, there's definitely a couple of surprises there. Lace, isn't there? Like, War Monster Firebird sitting yep. there with 14 split points there in the overall standings. Um, that's an interesting one. I think, you know, that was a, a preseason qualifier uh, team. I, I, it's, I, honestly, I, I'm going to have to keep my eyes on them because if they can replicate that kind of success, uh, not only will I be surprised, but uh, also they'll be heading, uh, you know, they'll be heading overseas. They'll be getting yeah. on a plane and, and walking up to land, um, which would be an incredible effort, honestly, because there's so many other teams, especially from their region, when you think about how many good and solid and uh, Chinese teams there have been for such a long time in APAC South, for them to come out and be... Yeah, just having a quick scan. Yeah, they're like the highest placed Chinese team yeah. so far. That's I, that's insane coming out of PSQs. I just want to chime in real quick. If there's Sharky back in business, there's Shark who was smelling blood in the water multiple times <laughs> from last week, right? And WF Firebird, I'm very interested to see you got Azu back as well. He had the experience from a year ago. The Shark, on the other hand, top five within those kills. A lot of damage done as well. And we saw from the Group A that most of the teams there love to play that zone. WF Firebird, they're completely different. They're a little bit more akin to the likes of X and Y, the likes of Wonton Dumpling, the Chinese teams who love to play Edge. Here we go again with another face to mention War Monster Firebird. Exactly. With all these sharks in this game, you know, it's such an Australian thing, guys. If uh, everyone's naming their name Sharky, you know, when you come to the land down under, people are expecting you to just touch a beach and see a shark. You know, we got some of the most dangerous animals. We also have some of the most dangerous teams uh, in our region. So, you know, we've had the likes of uh, Dark Zero. Um, thank you, America, for taking them. Uh, Moist Esports as well have left our region. But, you know, we can produce these uh, exceptional teams. Uh, and today, we're going to watch who's maybe going to fill their shoes, maybe going to overtake um, these glorious teams. Um, but you know what? We uh, we definitely have the best in the region. And to be able to broadcast that, not only to our beautiful channel here, but to Apex Legends um, genome, it's just exciting for our region to be able to show the skill that we have. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I mean, I, I think obviously we get to do that even more now that we've got the extra slots here as well. Um, so that's going to be uh, not only a cool thing for our teams to sort of reward them for their consistently, uh, you know, great performances. When you look at APAC South and how we've done at LAN, typically, uh, you know, we've been one of the best performing regions in terms of, you know, placement per amount of teams invited, average placement overall, that sort of thing. Um, but not only that, it means 
we're also going to get more land experience now, right? So you're getting more teams that get blooded uh, when they, they, they play in those lobbies. Because uh, I can tell you from, you know, as someone who's been there and, and sort of talked to players as, as they're going through their first land experience on that stage, <laughs> it's so different. And every time you hear them, they're like, oh, wow, I, I didn't realize I had to be so tight on this. Like, you know jumping on an evac tower together and and they they all of a sudden realize you get punished for things so much more in just all these little ways uh and the teams that come back from land they take that sort of experience with them so not only are they going to be getting better but i think we'll have more of those teams playing in a in a better more cohesive way and therefore it'll improve the region as a whole as we get all these these teams coming back with that land experience yeah, yeah. that's exactly right you know there's a, there's always like the the skill ceiling that you have within your region and then you're very right you go to land and then you're versing the best players from that region so the skill ceiling is a little bit higher so it gives you that opportunity to be able to reach that you know you can only be uh, as good as your best team or the best team that you verse um so it's very interesting to see but you know dax um like gino was saying getting into these land experiences uh i i feel that you know the the tensions are higher it's kind of like when you go into like a, a test or something and you've got all the information rearing to go and then you're there and everything just out the window, out your ears, uh, don't you think? That sounds like any kind of broadcast, right? But truth be told, I feel like when you get into LAN experience for some of these teams, especially the OCE squads, they really take that to APAC South and look to innovate from that point on. When I look at a team like Boogie Borders, it does feel like they're following the footsteps of what Dark Zero and Moise have left behind. You look at Team Burger, they're back and they're ready, and you know how experienced a squad like that is with both Sharky and Pricey on that roster. Those are just examples of how this talent really trickles down into APAC South, that they can teach their fellow players how to really get even better as a region. And from that point on, emulation becomes a, a thing down the line. For the next few weeks, I feel like there will be other teams picking up what these guys are really trailblazing with. But beyond that, getting to that LAN experience again, getting to that world stage and showing that APAC South can truly contend. Because when I've seen watch parties from other regions, they're just like, oh boy, the mouse and keyboard action in APAC out is just up there so if we can just get even more competition against the likes of na and emea maybe that's where we can just take a step ahead again that's exactly right and uh, i think you were saying before genome are we are we one of the regions that potentially have more mouse and keyboard yes, players we are yeah. yeah if you there's uh there's a stats section on liquipedia where you can go and check that um shout out to those guys always uh bring so much valuable info to the scene and last time i checked uh, there were a couple of Chinese players I think that were unaccounted for, so we weren't sure which input they were on. Uh, but of the ones we knew, it was roughly about 70%, I believe, <laughs> which is uh, which is definitely one of the highest splits. So 70% MNK in Apex South versus 30% controller. When you look at some other regions like NA, it's actually closer to like uh, to 50-50 between those inputs. And I mean, you know, everyone's got their, their different views on the matter. It's certainly a contentious one sometimes. I think MNK is, uh, you know, it's really fun. There's a lot of skill expression in it. Uh, and so to see a veteran like Sharky come back and to see, uh, you know, Pricey and Sharky on that same team, I mean, that's a lot of MNK fun on the one roster, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly right. I remember playing uh, one of the, the matches last week, and uh, I think we were out uh, in, in the ocean and we're seeing some tap strafe dancing. You know, you're not going to really see that <laughs> on controller and uh, watching all the teams kind of try to uh, take that member down is always exciting. It's very good for us viewers and us casters here being able to watch that kind of energy. Uh, I believe it's Legend, is it Legends Gaming that has a triple mnk squad yeah. i think yeah, they did ex is. they, they yep. their legends gaming dax did exceptional last week placing yeah. uh placing overall standings third yeah top three and come on like half the teams are triple mnk by this point apex out is a region aim beast exactly right so we know the teams we know the skill sets let's go into our first match on storm point Here we are, dropship at the ready, and we are gonna go start off day number two, week number two, and of course, a session between A versus C. Apex Out is here on the main channel. Apex Out is here with you folks. I am Dax here with Genom yet again, and immediately I'm looking at this map here, Genom. Storm Point, of course. We see our flight path heading towards the northwest side, and to start things off, Keep Going Gaming, a team that has always been contesting Lightning Rod, they're gonna get free reign this time around. 
Yeah, they've got that all to themselves. I think when we were looking at that beacon, it was more down to the south side that we were expecting potentially some contests. It does look like uh, Serenity will be keeping to themselves in Echo HQ. LU going to keep to themselves in Coastal Camp. And Barrow also uh, is not being split. So where does that mean the other team has gone? Uh, maybe it's Ash sitting over in mid-map up near Ski Lift um, that sort of changed things around. I'll have to scan back at the end of, uh, I think, this uh, at the end of this game to work out exactly how they've uh, they've switched that up. But MXF, uh, they're the ones who do actually end up getting Barrow to themselves. Yeah, Barometer they're actually not going to be contested here. T4 also establishing control of a devastated coast when we thought it could go to any other team. On the other hand, though, Legends Gaming, we watch them towards, of course, the usual Cedo Station, Lightning Unicorn, on the other hand, still without that Bangalore. And it, that's the one thing to really take note of. You don't have much verticality here without that Horizon as well. They're going to rely on the Valkyrie instead for that verticality, for that extra bit of rotation. And Lightning Unicorn, they're crafting right now, getting kitted to at least go for an early rotation as soon as possible. Yeah, and they, uh, let's have a look. Do they have the beacon as well? No, they don't have a beacon at the moment down near Coastal Cam. So LU just going to have to to play that one on spec. Maybe, uh, you know, follow some other teams around. You can see they're scanning around with the crypto. Maybe they'll spot a team, um, you know, rotating one way or the other. Uh, often you just have to infer that information from the teams around you. Yeah, of course, you just follow that rotation and in front of them, it's likes of Want on Dumpling, MXF, T4 as well. Alright, just evacuating away from Devastated Coast. And I think Serenity is the one, the team that has taken one of the Tridents as they're moving on forward. Let's keep an eye out though for the Legends picks because I love to see what else we have here so far in this game. Many have noted Apex out, they love to play that Watson. And you can see she's the third most picked Legend right now with nine of them. Bangalore though, sitting at the very top, Horizon to that top five and this is something i saw in scrims for a little bit you know bloodhound also getting a bit more love here and already keep going gaming during are getting scanned around yeah so it's a nice little split at the moment got a couple of different tech picks i you know i really enjoy that um you know what's in even oh, with uh that that pylon bug that we've got at the moment um people still choosing that oh keep, keep going game we've actually run into someone here um just above the gravity cannon near storm catcher and though legend gaming's also looking to third this these guys might want to be quick about this one yeah ash esports going for full engage legends gaming go on the prowl immediately and this is their chance to rack up some kp the third party kings our Legends Gaming, they take wow. command of that fight, and they have four points to start off the game so far. <laughs> Look at barely even any damage on them, right? They've done about a sweat. 350 damage between the three members, and that's enough to pick them up a sweet 3kp to start with. So a very uh, fortuitous game there for Legends Gaming to start off um, this first match of the series t4 actually just creeping up nearby as well but we do see um some of those fences and the pylon already set up for legends gaming so hopefully they don't get right on by the looks of it they know this is coming yeah armor's pretty even spikes are out and t4 looking for any opportunity to actually push in 57 though he's gonna need to get the shield bat up and t4 a squad that we did see a bit of also last year now they're just gonna evacuate gravity lift to get on away they don't want to clash with legends gaming at this point yeah if i could characterize t4 it would be a team that really uh makes the most of their sort of home zones home rings you know they they get a lot of wins when the zone ends up being close to uh you know their, their poi uh, and apart from that uh, it can be a bit struggle street for them sometimes uh, a little bit feast or famine but either way let's see how they can do here setting up the low storm catch uh, depends whether the ring does end up pulling towards uh, with legend and uh, we saw t4 setting up down there or whether it goes a bit further east and ends up uh, where some of these teams like BK Gaming are set up in this set of buildings um, over here towards the coast. 
Yeah, I think a bunch of them are really backing on that Eastern pull. You got MDI White in one building, BK Gaming, keep going, MXF, God Hand, and I do believe Bear Claw down below as well. So overall, it's really just about getting a spot as soon as possible. We've seen this actually here on Stormpoint more so than World's Edge. Teams that love to play the zone and with Group A, of course, in the mix, that's exactly what's going to happen with all the Watson fences being set up already. What's in addition to the Bangalore and Bloodhound? It's an interesting combo, right? I mean, Bloodhound, Bang, together can be quite an aggressive combo, but then you've got the Watson there for the ring scan, uh, as well as, uh, you know, sort of the defensive setup. So, oh, interesting. Like, you know, are they sort of, uh, instead of leaning into one playstyle or the other, hedging their bets if it's too much, or is it actually a good spread? I'll be interested to see how this competition works out. Honestly, from what I've seen from scrims, it does feel like they're picking up the blood hand now just for a little bit of that scan. MXF though already taking the fight towards another, and it's KPG who's actually gonna take MXF down. Still, keep going gaming. This is the difference from when they're not gonna get contested at the start. Keep going gaming can actually play the game today. Yeah, that's right. They were getting stomped up at what was it, Lightning Rod last week? Yep. I believe. Yeah, yeah, so, oh, Circle pulls onto them as well. So as you say, clearing out their roof here could uh, pay big dividends for K KGG. And uh, yeah, as we can see there, so the ring there. goes even further east. MDY, VK, KGG, uh, even God Hand. Their position a little less tenable, but they do have that orange to play in down there. Uh, teams like Legends Gaming will eventually have to start moving across. And this... Interestingly, Group A and C, you are seeing more teams outside of the ring. Teams like IBG, Wanton Dumplings. So perhaps it'll even be, uh, you know, maybe AVB will be that more conservative group matchup. And AVC, perhaps we'll see a bit more fun, a bit more action early on. Yeah, and I'm most interested to see Lightning Unicorn still stay back. We saw them play this in their first game, especially against Bearclaw Gaming. Let everyone else pick a station. They're just going to rotate with the Valkyrie instead, the Skyward Dive, to get in position later on, despite any kind of scenario. And I do feel like some other teams have picked that kind of reasoning as well. More Valkyries in this server alone compared to any other day we've had so far in ALGS. Team Burger, though, many eyes, of course, on the returning champion, Sharky. Passion perhaps reignited. Very excited to see what Team Burger and the legacy of that name can bring to the table. Yeah, God, I really hope so. I mean, having a look at their sort of play last week, Dax, it felt like um, uh, their POI was, I think, part of the reason that they were struggling as well. Dropping up at Zeus Station, uh, if you have a, you know, a rough drop spot, sorry, a rough drop ship, it can take you actually quite a while to get up to your POI, uh, further delaying your rotations, and then all of a sudden, uh, you're really having to in someone just to throw it in at zone 3 or 4 and find your spot. And it felt like they were struggling to do that as we see final start here going in towards Akuma. Yeah, we little engage here for final start. One of our favorite names before we got into this game. The Tree Cleaner. Looking to clean up house. <laughs> Triple Roller Squad at the ready. It's Akuma here with Killapaws, of course. A new addition from Tom Young Kung before, plus the coach of, as well. And Akuma's just leaking now on the inside. Try it to see. He's going to actually face off against them. It's, it's really just a whole steady kind of play. They have the Dark Void available, and yeah, final start's just waiting outside. As you mentioned, yeah, look, uh, you know, Killapaz, obviously, he's still on Roller. He made that change. A lot of the community doesn't necessarily agree with the change, but he's sticking to his guns. And I guess the other thing you have to note is they've changed their IGL here. I yeah. mean, that's that's an interesting thing to do mid-season. Dropping Limo, um, who honestly I thought was uh, doing a decent job over the past year. Obviously, he'd been sort of, you know, making that transition from Pub Stomper to, uh, you know, ALGS. And it uh, can be a tough one sometimes. Uh, I felt like he'd been making strides, but uh, you know, if your teammates don't have faith in you and don't have faith in your calls, um, then yeah, maybe a switch is necessary as they seem to um, just just chill for a little while while we've got our other teams over here, potentially in God spot like VKG also chilling 
pretty hard right now. Yeah, BKG just, they've been throwing pot shot after pot shot from afar, playing the long bow to just build up that EVO shield as soon as possible. And we've seen it already, immediate rotation into the zone, a good pull going their way, Ooh. God Hand also nearby, but Akuma's the one looking around right now. X and Y also very late on the rotation, they're still here by Zeus Station, they're gonna need to heal on up, and these meds are getting costly. XD, I'm worried! But looks like our shot caller for X and Y <laughs> alive kicking and X and Y. They're going to be running into the likes of Overlook and Akuma very soon. Yeah, I feel like those teams always stress you out, right? Because if you're a zone team like this, you've played this enough to know exactly which pi pixel you need to pop your meds on, right? Whether that's a syringe or a med kit, uh, maybe even a phoenix, right? You have that stuff on <laughs> lock, um, but it is still stressful as a viewer oh. sometimes when you're watching them get there. Gino, don't be like that. I played Apex yesterday and that was my stress for a whole game. I had to play with the ring. I, everyone would tell me when to heal up, when to go, but it's time now to go for X and Y again. They're still taking damage. Gate kept here by Overlook Entertainment, who has just been very much so that kind of team that looks for opportunity. We saw it especially in that three showdown from last week. They took the chance to actually go for the fight. And X and Y now, can they make it in time? YC moving in, JR is already down to the ground thanks to that ring damage. And XD, oh, it's painful. They had issues a while ago getting into the lobby. Right now, they're having issues getting into the zone. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if that was, uh, you know, deliberately kind of going down to the ring because they knew they can get picked up afterwards or not. Uh, sometimes that can be a play, even if you've got like a gold knockdown. It can actually make sense in terms of meds to do that. Of course, the only price you have to pay is that every time you get revived, you have less and less time uh, to get picked up afterwards. You can see that time, zero <laughs> seconds left on the revive. Really cutting it close oh. here. And they have to even trade up who's up. And here comes Overlook already on the prowl. Taking apart X and Y bit by bit. JR even with a sliver of HP. He can still fight back. We're watching CC and what he can do here. Behind the knockdown shield. There's a target. Energy barricades into play. But X and Y caught in their rotation. And now taken down by Overlooked. Okay, but the ring's about to go. Overlook, they, I mean, look at this. They're popping uh, the reses right now. I hope these guys have sufficient meds. They have to leave Surprisey behind. They can't even afford to pick him up. So many teams are rotating in now. I mean, you saw Akuma just going in beyond them. Um, they were slightly more uh, prepared for this. You can see with the evac, they are going to head into this ring. But we are about to have things kick off, Dax. I can tell you right now. This is where it truly begins the Apex out chaos final start though versus MDY and already Shaman taking one down the tree cleaner moving away as well to try to find at least a location to play towards Stormcatcher but Serenity, IBG, T4 are all nearby and this is where it gets really tough to get into the zone IBG looking around MDY white it's still them sticking to their guns and sticking to their location but it also is Team Burger and Akuma also trying to knock on their doorstep like the Unicorn far away is gone. Sharky's the only one still standing here for Team Burger. Tried to play off the black hole. And Sharky, he can smell blood. Sees the targets down below. Trying to get the hell out of there though. Up the batch, but it's to stay alive. Weighs already down for the count. And MDY Black, they're gone too. But Team Burger, this is getting very difficult to survive versus Akuma, who's happy to stick around in the corner and stay alive as a 3-0. Yeah, I mean, their position, Akuma, they're, they're stuck below right now, but at least they have the three members up so they can get the reset, whereas Sharky, well, he's going to have to do it all himself this game and unfortunately does not find a safe spot. Will get sniped out. Team Berg off to a rough start. Yeah, and final start falls the clock now. Chance here perhaps for IBG as well as C4 to move on in. But we're watching here. One ton dumpling. Great aim, great aim. And they're looking to swat away God Hand as soon as possible. And Jackie Chen, the least CT. Names already so good. But Draco will fall first and foremost. Boring also looks to trap down the target. The only controller player in this squad right now as Akuma's gone as well. But Wonton Dumpling, the W stands for the W key. Move forward, says Jackie Chan. And God Hand's gone from this lobby. God Hand struggling to keep up with some of the firepower coming out here. Wonton Dumpling, definitely, we know them as a very strong fighting team. And. This will just about um, secure them a little bit of space in the ring. They're going to have to play probably down near this gravity cannon for the next little while, though, which is something. It's probably not the best place. We're talking about the best places. That's probably 
um, going the way of someone like Keep Going Gaming, who are holding that Eastmost house where the ring is going to end up pulling. Uh, Legends Gaming, they're going to start kicking down these cat walls in front of them as we see all these other teams on the edge of the ring just try and grief each other going in. Serenity, IVG are going to be shooting at each other with T4 in the middle who are likely to take the brunt of this. There you go, Gorn, in a matter of seconds. And the beat of that sandwich and they just get feasted on by the two teams looking at them. Wants on Dumpling though, holding IVG at bay as much as possible. And here we go again, a team that always changes their names up. But I believe we're watching Gugu right now on the Horizon, Jackie Jan or XCZ on the Bandler as well. Wants and Dumpling getting the hell out of there already. IBG taking the orange, but Serenity also wants a piece of the action. Here comes Boogie alongside Legacy and Jesco. A 3 0 this time around as IBG is gone from this game. Wants and Dumpling though still alive towards that cliff. Serenity is the one seizing them, and the Peak God is the one to first fall here. Gugu's gone already. Serenity with the man advantage. They're pushing forward. Big frags though, keeping them at bay. And Serenity will stick around for the time being. Legacy and Bugi throwing out some beams there though to get the better of Wonton Dumpling. Even some Skyners coming in. Can they reset and try and just buy themselves a little bit of space with this energy barricade? We're also watching here Legends Gaming try and hold down the top floor of this building over to the west. They've got MDY White and then going back oh. to the other fight there, Serenity. It actually gets turned around on them uh, as we do see Bear Claw Gaming run in. Who cares about the numbers? If Wonton Dumpling wants you, they will get you. And they're one of the hottest teams right now to watch out for in this game so far. Bear Claw Gaming though, opportunists as we've seen. Belkin here, of course, getting on the board. And it's good to see Bear Claw Gaming alive as a trio. Belkin needs to heal on up. <laughs> Bear Claw will pick up that KP. Belkin King Rat from last week. Yeah, as you say, it's nice for him to have some support from the teammates this time. And here we go. Five squads left. Bearclaw looking to push up. Keep, keep going gaming. They've actually held out people for quite a while here. They've got the circle to themselves for the moment, but that won't last much longer. Oh no, easy flash. Couldn't fight back. Well, they're going for the Evex Tower and Legends Gaming. They're gonna need to go for that reset as MDY White is just breathing on their necks. Pylon is up. MDY White White decides to go for Player K. Beiji also using a bit of that cover. The body box there, sure, but Legends Gaming still with a fight back. They're caught in the crossfire now, and Legends is gone as well. Next should be MDY White, White. Three remaining here. Keep going, Gaming. They've had God Spot for so long, and they're taking advantage of it. Oh, disgusting crossfire there from Bearclaw Gaming and VK Gaming to get rid of Legends Gaming as they try and push him. Well, that's a lot of gaming that's going on yep. in this lobby. Uh, and then we've got Keep Going Gaming. Um, <laughs> apparently everyone in this lobby still is in fact gaming as we have our last three squads alive. All three members are up and running for them. Who's going to have the better of this though? KGG, they've got the roof at the moment. Um, VK Gaming playing on the low ground, and so a BCG. All I have to say is, I don't want to play any of those every time we say the word gaming kind of games from what we're going to get in this group. But keep going gaming. I said it a while ago, Gene. I'm going to say it again. This is one of the first few times we see them actually play a full game. And we're seeing them do very well inside the zone. Still with a high ground here. KH sniping with a 30-30. Very popular gun, especially for what we saw Boogie Borders did from last week. But Bear Claw has a different plan since they have Heck as well as Rudne here. They can set up the way that they want with the pylons with the fences and Ooh. keep going gaming they're gonna want to be the ones who have to run into them later on once this ring pulls in yeah because bcg they've been slowly moving up not only have they been spreading out along the south side of this circle but they're starting to take more and more space you see vkg just getting the res off there in time but both of these teams eventually may get a little too constricted by the fences that get set up down south here by Bear Claw Gaming. If they can position a pylon well, um, then, you know, perhaps even the ultimate's coming out. Rudine's got that Rolling Thunder ready, and so does Bible from KPG. So both of these teams have that ready to put down, but Bear Claw can insulate themselves from this with the pylon. 
Back to the shot though from Shao Kai with the Sentinel of Lee's keeping Bear Claw Gaming in cover for the time being. Heck, Rudne, they're gonna need to top up those shields. KPG on the other side as well. And everyone's looking at Bear Claw Gaming and their position right now. But Bible takes a bite out of VKG. Keep going gaming, facing off against their closest contender first and foremost. Cage still here in cover. Now VK Gaming is the one hurting. And Tasa can he even survive from this point? VK's gone. It's just squad versus squad. And we've seen this from Bear Club before. They've set up well. Keep going gaming, playing to their namesake. Damage being done. Artillery will rain. And the black holes there keeping Lan in a spot. But keep going gaming. The Creeping Garage gets the first already. Keep going gaming are moving forward. And they will take our first map today. Wow, that was impressive stuff there by KPG. I mean, even getting a kill, uh, even getting a knock with that creeping barrage at the end, uh, you know, that was something we talked about that was going to be one of the keys to victory for Bear Claw Gaming there. Uh, but KPG, after eliminating uh, VKG, just really proactive. You saw them go for They were cleaning out all of that utility, taking down the fences and the interceptor pylon. Well, not hoping, but seeing that Bear Claw Gaming took out first in uh, our week one, Dax. And, you know, they were so close to getting this victory. But, uh, you know, uh, a team from Group C that we haven't really seen before are just taking the victory. Um, straight out of the bat, we just had so much action. How are you feeling with that first game, Dax? Oh, I'm just happy to always be able to cast Apex out. But Bear Claw Gaming, right? I thought it was going to be Deja Vu. I was ready to yeah. say first week, first win. Second week, first win. But no, keep going gaming. I, I really have to hammer this point on. The fact that they're able to rotate swiftly from Lightning Rod and decide to play zone instead of desperately trying to find kills around the map, go for that, that kind of contest again against, against, I believe, AGL it was last week. It makes such a stark difference. And it, it really felt like some of the teams that were banking on going for that later rotation they were immediately punished by the likes of keep going by the likes of vk mdy white we saw legends gaming though they've been the masters of the third party for so very long a little bit of that experience from of course land last year they're bringing it to apex out but beyond that it's really just was a kind of case where if you have the initial zone pull, we have that initial spot, you're happy to play out the rest of the game. Yeah, and Legends Gaming, you know, it's got Easy Flash, who was uh, basically our damage king, Dax, you know. Always, uh, he was, they were holding kill leader for most of the match, you know, they did that uh, exceptional third party just above the grab cannon um, near Storm Capture, you know, their performance is always consistent, um, you know, they didn't uh, reach the top today, but, you know, they're definitely getting warmed up. Uh, now, Dax, I don't know if it's a bit of a caster's curse, but we saw many teams battling the zone coming out of Thunderwatch. Yeah, it's, it's just when we notice them, right, that's when they basically die. X and Y, they had such such a long rotation. And Gino was mentioning, sure, you can get down to get a little bit of HP back up. But by that point, they were so far off. Overlook was watching them. We also saw it for anyone who faced off against Wanton Dumpling near that Southern Orange. It's just damage being done by them. I'm looking at the KP right now. And yes, well, Keep Going Gaming had an incredible performance, especially from Bible, getting 2k damage and 5 kills. I'm still watching out for Wanton dumpling as well six kills for jackie chan aka xcz they've been so stellar even taking fights like 2v3s and when you get a team that plays a bit of that hard edge they get that kind of momentum moving forward lace i'm really worried for the rest of these rosters when they face off against each other Exactly right. You know, Wonton Dumpling is something that I've kept an eye on. And as we saw in the game before, you know, they were sort of just gatekeeping all the teams rolling on in. But as we have a look at the scoreboard here, of course, we have Keep Going Gaming right at the tippity top there, coming in clutch with the 23 points. And just look at the kills there, Dax. 11 for the whole team. That's just, that no one's even close yet. They're basically a little bit more than double to Bear Claw Gaming, which, you know, we've seen last week come out with a, a win in their first match. I mean, it was an exquisite call, really, for Keep Going Gaming in that top three fight. First and foremost, they showed their hand versus Bear Claw Gaming when VK was forcing Bear Claw to actually shield on up. And from that point on, they immediately pivot into taking down VK Gaming first, knowing the ring was putting that pressure. Just some good decision making, some good fights from Keep Going Gaming overall. And that's exactly what we wanted to see from them compared to last week's performance. 
Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, it's, it's too early to tell. We're already in our match one. You know, we, we always say that, you know, this team's got to do well, this one's got to do well, and then they sit there and they shock us, they surprise us. So it's only game, you know, the first match here for today. And you know what? We still have some teams that could rise from the bottom. You know, we always love a little bit of an underdog story. So are there any teams there that may have not been in your, your you know, you've seen top in the scoreboard that you may think could do a little bit better next match? I mean, I'm honestly looking at X and Y to do a little bit better. I'm looking at Akuma to do a little bit better as well. But I think the name everyone's looking at right now is Team Burger. When our champ was the only one still alive, it was danger for Team Burger and didn't pan out. Maybe next time here for Team Burger as they're trying to maybe shake off a little bit of the ring rust as well because ALDS yes. is such a different beast. And yes, and we'll take a quick break and we will come back for our next games. Welcome back, everyone. The passion is real as we have groups A and C battling it out today. You have witnessed what this region can do. You know, we have teams from Australia, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and more. Dax, we're gearing up to go to game two. Uh, again, I wanted to have a quick touch on legend picks. You know, we're, we're <laughs> on Storm Point at the moment. We're going to play three matches on Storm Point. We've seen a lot of Bangalores. Any changes that you noticed uh, from the previous? week uh, where teams have might have swapped it up a little bit. I mean, more Valkyries, yes, and also more Bloodhounds are the ones to really watch out for. I've always been theorycrafting without Sierra into the meta. Will we still play a bit of that scan? And it seems like for 8-Pax out, some of the teams that want to play that Bloodhound use the Eyes of the Allfather, use that Beast of the Hunt versus the Bangalore Smokes. It's something to consider. But from all the regions that you said, Lace, it's the team from China that does get that dub. Keep going gaming, getting a game on this time around. And it's such a stark contrast from what we saw last time from what we saw in last week's performance they were only in the top 15 this time around they start things off strong with the top one finish 
That's exactly right. You know, we see a couple of teams sort of start out really strong and then they may dwindle a little bit further within our map changes and stuff like that. So, you know, hopefully they can keep up the energy and the passion for the next match. Um, yeah, we'll put a touch on a few of our uh, Chinese te teams. You know, you saw Wonton uh, Dumpling in there as well. They're uh, quite a team to watch. I was absolutely blown away with their performance in the last match. Of course, KPG coming out on top as well. You know, we got to highlight these teams. Um, we've obviously had a fair few changes uh, with some of the... Uh, I think it's the Australian rosters, so that's been exciting. But you know what? Gearing up to go into the uh, match two, um, we obviously have a look and see what kind of legends that these use. I touched on that a lot of teams are picking Bangalore. I feel like we're seeing a little bit more catalyst this time compared to Conduit. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing here because Catalyst was already popular from last week alongside Watchin, which is a bit more Apex out compared to anything else. Just to build on that conduit point though, it does feel like for teams that don't want to really contest, they don't need that extra bit of shielding, they don't need that immediate regen transfer, and instead they prioritize a bit more utility. Instead, if they play zone, they're going to be playing that Catalyst. When they want to go hunt around for the edge, they can play that Bloodhound. And if they feel like it, there's not enough verticality, Horizon of course is a pick, but what we said a while ago valkyrie is there for the squads that like to run crypto because when you're playing crypto you're usually just sticking around in the spot right and the valkyrie that's a skyward dive then you have an evac tower you just build on as many bits of mobility as much as possible to enable a team trying to play off an emp later on yeah, exactly right. And uh, last week we saw, uh, you know, a fair few high kill t like teams in a cohesion and they had quite a few kills. And we had our team running up with like 11 kills last week. You know, we saw um, Boogie Borders with, uh, I think it was 17 kills, uh, which was absolutely insane. Are we, are we planning to see, do you reckon there's going to be a cheeky 20 bomb ever in Pro League Dax? Am I oh, getting my, sure. my hopes high? <laughs> or do you think we might see this with some of our more aggressive teams? Look, it just means that you did your research, Lace, and I'm going to applaud you for that because <laughs> there are teams that have gone above and beyond. 20 kills, that's usually a normal day at the office for a team like Wonton Dumpling. But I also want to bring up again one of the records we saw in LCQ last year. 31 KP game from X and Y. Yes, they struggled here, but they're also one of those kind of teams that can have that pop or performance. IBG as well, getting in the hundreds in terms of points with over multiple games and it's kind of sad to see honestly ibg not really perform as high as we've expected from them they made it to top 10 yes back in land but the scrim results have been exceptional for ibg it's just maybe a little bit of that stage jitters moving forward because we did see them basically get caught trying to cross especially from the grav cannon area moving into the buildings later on yeah, so they're usually quite a, you know, I've touched on that they're quite an edge hunting team and with edge hunting generally comes more kill points, you know, you generally pick up the teams that are rotating in. I didn't really see that too much from, uh, you know, Iron Blood Gaming within that. So hopefully, you know, they can showcase this going into our, set, uh, our, our next match of the day. So, you know, uh, these, these edge teams should be getting the high kills. Obviously, we do have a fair few teams making the fast rotate. You know, we saw Wonton Dumpling and stuff already there, ready to go. Um, so uh, I'm really hoping that some of these teams can change their tactics or do what they you know do best um which is either play the zone or, or uh you know come in from the edge and, and sweep up the competition yeah and i'm happy to see sereni as well they made that to top 10 with a 3-0 exactly so we're right. gonna get a full lobby here lace yes so as we go we are on storm point this is our second match of the day i'm so excited let's go have a look at the action We're already in disguise here, folks, as we're getting into game number two. Genome going to be back with me yet again on the mic, but look and see already here, Genome. From north to south, this is going to be our drop spots for today. And teams like Team Burger, they're going to get to land at the Zoo Station. The pylon also going to be very serendipitous for the likes of Serenity. Watching Lightning Unicorn at the end of this rotation as well towards Coastal Camp. And overall, most of these squads overlook struggling perhaps to get the down beast as soon as they would like. But beyond that, it's a good drop for everyone. Yeah, so as we mentioned, uh, it was uh, Ash Esports indeed who changed from that potential contest we had down at Coastal Camp. So they are going mid-map. Um, and then, yeah, as you said, it's a, it's a very different ring to last time. So going over towards down beast, maybe even mill, uh, if we end up over there, we'll 
Definitely favors some different teams. I mean, you've got Akuma, Drew drop at mill when Dreamfire aren't there. So this is uh, it's a pretty fortuitous pull for them in this one group where they're not having to uh, play from a lesser POI from that. Here we've got good old Strafing frame, uh, Flame playing his, uh, his best GDA life out over here and nicking the car once again from Sonote Caves. Man's always playing RP as a carjacker, basically. Yeah. Even in LAN, he's done so. And it's funny to think that with how the spawns are now for the Trident, one by Barometer, one by that old INCR, Marie, Legends Gaming dropping onto Seto Station, they have a lot of options if they want to choose to do so. But you said a while ago, moving into this ring pull right now, Western side really favors teams that drop there first and foremost. And Akuma, Overlook Entertainment, those are the two teams to watch out for for now. Yeah, Legends Gaming, they're already hot in pursuit here, trying to get into Mill. Where are they going to pull up? They can play those those uh, buildings that we see just to the right of them. The Mill team, Akuma, has already gone... They think it's going to be Mill rather than, say, Down Beast. They've gone back Mill to start off with, and they're playing one of those, uh, those back buildings out where the Mill Trident itself spawns. And then you've got uh, a team like BCG, who they've got ring information. Um, here. they've just grabbed Cannon over here down towards B. Not sure if that means they're going to try and gatekeep some teams over here. Um, you know, you can see them trading a couple of shots there with X and Y who started over at Cenote. Um, yeah, look, a lot of options for these guys here, honestly. Uh, teams taking a little bit of time to pull up right now, though, oof, potentially some teams running into each other. Burger up the north as well as, uh, maybe some more down here in the middle of the map as well. So Burger, yeah, they've Ooh. just run straight into final start. Completely caught off old mate the tree cleaner. Uh, and he's been very separated from the rest of his team. All three of the final start members were quite spread out across North Pad, and that was an easy 1kp there for Burger. And again, that feather run calls really for Team Burger. It's immediately finding one, and Sharky showing up immediately into this room. So, stellar start here for Team Burger. They're gonna get the first KP on the board. I'm also was considering Bear Call Gaming might be in trouble. I think they were looking for a trident there, and they ran into X and Y and one of the other squads who already had those cars under their well leadership. So, full engage an eye at them as well uh watching out for everyone else ash mdy white they're playing at the Seto station right now so overall it really feels like these teams try to head towards the western side here bangalore again though top pick so far mdyy also with bring information are going to be starting out over at Seto station um having a look at the legends we've actually had zero changes from, uh, from the first game so people still sticking with that ibg potentially looking uh, for an early win here. So they want to take out BKG with just Xiao Kai up and trying to get Ooh. this. Oh, okay. He's pulled one back at least. Gets a full kill. Yo, Xiao Kai, where did that come from? And look at the inventory he's holding right now. I do believe he has a Peacekeeper on one side, the Flatline on the other. And that's something to consider moving forward into these kind of games. That lesser what? players are going to go for something like oh my god. Seems what? like you see something though. Even that, he's going for the reses oh! here. But a I'm nice just... beam here from Asia's is actually going to oh, allow him to call. take this one out. Incredible. I thought he'd completely misplayed that. As he had gone out there, it was like, you know, didn't have faith in his team. Uh, you know, was going to let that, that skirmish go by. And then VKG, like, almost had the opportunity to get both teammates up. But suddenly, here's the res goes back in and actually gets the cleanup. Because at that point, it was a 1v1. Uh, with at least one knocked member down for each team. So, damn, that almost, that almost went so wrong there for IBG. Yeah, IBG, they just went for it. Good spot there, Gino. But not only that, IBG taking the opportunity and claiming this house to themselves. Unfortunately for them, though, they're down a member as Dexter will just be a box right now. Ash Esports also looking from the other side of the street. Keeping an eye out though, elsewhere, Serenity nearby towards the mill. The mill has two teams right now in. On the southern side, you got MDY White. On the northern side, you got Bear Claw Gaming. Oh, these are the two teams hedging their bets and saying the ring's gonna pull our way. Yep, a couple of teams over at Down B still. Perhaps uh, just, you know, hoping for a slightly better pull 
Um, I mean, Overlooked Entertainment don't necessarily have that information. They have spotted out Team Burger, though, who, as you can see, are just inside the room right now. But BCG actually getting into a little bit of a skirmish with MDY White. Those two teams playing uh, the mill buildings. Yeah, it's always a hot contest when you are neighbors there by the mill. Overlooked Entertainment still playing to the namesake, loving to take high ground as much as possible. And that's the beauty of landing a down beast. You get a perch that no one can contest. Burger's hurting. Thanks to the ring, sure. Overlook trying to keep tabs on them. But Burger wisely on the inside of the beast instead and will stay safe for the time being. Yeah, I mean, Sharky's got that Rolling Thunder. He can pop the Bang Ult to try and push Overlook down off the top here, who are sitting directly above them. Uh, I mean, this, it does seem like a little bit of a theme of Burger or, you know, Divine, as we were calling them last week, uh, which is, it feels like they're putting themselves at a disadvantage a lot of the time. They're often pushing in from the edge of the ring, taking damage, and then trying to win a fight when, you know, each of their members is maybe down 30, 40 health each. Uh, yeah. And that's, you know, it's almost like you're taking on reds with blues at that point. Um, you've got that much of a, of a health disadvantage versus opponents in those situations. Yeah, it's really extreme with these late rotations. And yes, we do get context, but it does feel like for Team Burger, they need to get in there quicker. MDY White instead will be the example of that speed. Bear Claw Gaming fighting back though, and Bear Claw Gaming take the fight to MDY White, and they will take command of the mill now. Ash Esports, one of our teams running Valkyrie in this lobby. Uh, early on, we had MXF who was running Valkyrie. They picked up that building on the far right of your screen there. Ash are just landing on the building that Akuma are at. Remember, these were the guys set up here from the start. This is the mill team who've been playing this uh, right from the get-go. Okay, Killapod is going to try and bring them in here with that ult, and he does very well. Amethyst doing beauty with the black hole to boot, and Akuma now staking their claim. Not allowed in, Ash Esports, not allowed. And Akuma holds off the home invaders. We get the Dark Veil into play as well there. Seen on the outside, Legends Gaming keeping an eye out nearby. And Player K, he takes some damage, sure, but this is okay for Legends. They can just keep trading those shields. Keep them topped up with a pile on yeah, and look, hope for better evos later I'm, on. I'm not going to lie, Dax. I mean, you got to rethink yeah. your, your game strategy at that point. If you're Ash and you are Valk ulting into that spot, you must know it's going to be taken. Like, unless... Let me double check here. Ash Esports, do they have a player scan character? I don't believe so. Um... Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I just, I, I really can't validate that decision, right? Like, you need to be um, planning better, either, you know, going for a less contested position there if you are ulting that late into the circle, or, or trying to fight your way in. I mean, that's, um, that was a very sus 50-50 there, and it's kind of no surprise um, that they've just dropped some extra KP and loot for Akuma, further strengthening their position at the back of this mill ring. Yeah, it's a heartbreaker. They just basically delivered themselves onto Akuma. Final start, though, trying to finally get into the ring. X and Y, Wanton Dumpling, and Lightning Unicorn all on the south side who may see each other here as well. They're keeping an eye out, really, for Wanton Dumpling, who's going to get that engage versus Lightning Unicorn towards the orange very, very soon. The push now, XDD trying to stay in cover. Lightning Unicorn, of course, heavily fortified with Jack Hute setting it all up. Really, Wanton Dumpling, they're trying to find any way in but legacy from afar courtesy of serenity their third party right now and they take one down and watch the dump inside the push though comes to your shove lightning unicorn have had enough and they're cleaning up house here jack youth will fall to the hand of board sure lightning unicorn taking a lot of damage actually and wants a dumpling yes they're eliminated but danger is afoot x and y serenity both looking at them yeah, both from a fast serenity a little closer than the other. We'll actually get that finish onto Jack Cute there. Not gonna overextend here. Serenity actually pretty happy with their position, so they're happy to just uh, you know do some damage to one of the other teams in their vicinity. Uh, as a little bit of an update, guys, Iron Blood Gaming did manage to get the full three back up. Went over to I think it was Cedo Station um, to get that res off. So your favorite edge team back up and running.
Yeah, they're ready to hunt yet again. Ringdo pulling in and Legends Gaming right Ooh. at the center of it. But here we go again. Orange part two. Lightning Unicorn versus Serenity. They break down the pylon first and foremost, hunting down the remaining members here. But actually, they're just gonna back on away. They don't want to be caught in the ring full immediately. You see them use the Dark Veil to get the hell out as well. Mm. And Lightning Unicorn is left to a duo. Yeah, so good work from Gopgaps and Lala Bang there. Actually just playing the top of the orange very well. Uh, you know, obviously you have to climb up that hatch or you have to somehow get in that top window, all fenced off. Um, so I think they did a good job of dissuading any pushes there, considering that they were a duo. And Serenity, Serenity obviously knew that and were thinking about, um, you know, trying to finish off the rest of the KP. Anyway, we got X and Y here sitting up on Godlock. Not a bad spot here. The, the ring has pulled further north um, and will continue out towards those back buildings. So, um, as we mentioned before, Akuma is sitting back there in an in a absolutely killer spot along with Legends Gaming and MXF. Um, teams down here like final start. Well, it's uh, time to finally start going towards the ring, I guess. I don't know. That was terrible. Don't worry, you're pretty funny, man. But do we see here Team Burger also in a bit of a skirmish for themselves? Full engage and age on now. Sharky will be backing on away, still has that Rolling Thunder to utilize if ever. But it's such a problem for Team Burger to head outside because Overlook and the same is still keeping an eye out. Them height is so important that Lightning Unicorn is taking a little bit of a chunk of that. Final start right behind them. X and Y already evacuating towards the Southern Mill on top of the rooftops. But this is problematic for Lightning Unicorn. They have resurrected their final member here to become a 3-0 yet again nice. they're, they're, but they're moving in with the frag to try and siege against MDY Black okay MDY um, the crypto alt goes down there I believe that was uh, oh no actually that might have been Lala Bang putting that in just to try and uh, break some of the util and get them on the inside here, but they can't quite make it. I think they're gonna have to sit outside, trying to hide behind the trident, doesn't save Lala Bang, and once again, down to two X and Y, trying to close the net now. And you know who has gotten that KP over for the Lightning Unicorn Squad? It's Serenity, they've always been watching this team, picking them apart bit by bit. X and Y, a perch to work with, facing off perhaps against the likes of IBG and God Hand. But with his high ground, JR, he's happy to still keep poking with the 30-30 when it comes down to the clutch. JR is the one X and Y relies on right now. They're relying on him to do damage from afar. Teams in the mill. There's quite a few in there. I mean, that's what, four, I believe, in the bottom. And uh, yeah, another two up in that top building, if you count Serenity, uh, nearby. But it's these back houses that we're watching here. IBG. Um, they've got another nice clean up there onto God Hand, a team that they uh, you know, really should be winning those battles against. Meanwhile, T4 struggling a little bit here. Yeah, KPG still nearby, and it's all up to the Catalyst now to try and survive. No escape for T4. They are terminated here. What well, I see, though, keep going gaming. Throw out the energy barricade. Looking to stay on live as much as possible and keep going gaming right now. They have a good spot here to watch out for full engage and overlook nearby. Final start though, they finally made their way, way into the mill here. Okay, having a look at Team Berg here who have made their approach from the north. Okay, they're trying to get in on top of MXF. They've got a catalyst, but there's no Watson for them. Um, so, you know, some utility to try and hold teams at bay. All right, Team Burger, why do we have a listen to the man making a return to Apex South, Sharky and the rest of the We just gotta kill this angle here. The roof team yeah. can probably see us and they'll try to fuck with us. I think they're fighting us. The show. We, we got kills DB side. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone bottom floor of the next building over. Okay. Which one? This one? Yeah, Someone queued up the height, so I'm gonna assume. Do we just go for it? Mm. Do you have a smoke, Sharky? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna smoke here. Uh, yeah, alright, let's go, let's go, fuck it. Yep, yeah, going. Running? Boxes. Yep. Yeah. Stay for me. We have oh, an yeah, ammo here as well. Can we get top? No, team bet, team bet, I'm pretty sure. Alright. Are the people in? Sorry. Wait, fighting! Are they? They're getting fucked. Oh, nice, Spicy. There's a full team upstairs. Full team upstairs. There's a fucking chill, 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 chill. Yeah, I'm, I'm batting. Fucking chill. Nice, though. 
I don't know. I just the bank. Someone's evacuating outside. I'm in full team. Yeah. Ready on the fence. I'm needing it. Yeah, I'm Wait, she, she ran back there. Ran back there. Ran back. Okay, it okay. could be a duo up top. Yeah, can I'm we go? Checking this bank's box. Yeah, I'm coming with you, Pricey. They're they reinforced that door. I can't. Okay, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm coming. 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 Maybe next time, bro. We just gotta hold bottom floor. Yeah. We gotta make sure no one comes to us. I didn't get my kill either. Cringe. People are there. Well, I'm ultra bad. 40 on conduit. Nice. There's still three men behind this fence. They got like no room. healing. There's still bats on that on that purple box right here. Yeah, yeah get them off. Get them off. Yeah. I've dropped a bunch as well. Okay, I picked, I picked them up. I'm six five. Two uh, I need help. Watching. Just, it's just one there. Arriving right, 76. Right. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm one, eleven one. Eleven one. Yeah, I'm dropping. I'm dropping. Two bats. Thank you. All right, so we see them taking the middle building there, the bottom floor at least. They could have been a little bit more aggressive or getting two down Akuma, but actually letting them reset. And because they still have the cat alive, uh, Akuma managing to, to stabilize a little bit on that top floor, reinforce the doors with that with that cat still available. And then you've got also a duo of lightning unicorn in the roof. So honestly, uh, I think Team Burger are actually in a better position than they even know right now, as long as they play together. Uh, and leverage that that full duo there. Even firing the Kraber across at these other teams trying to pull up to the ring now, Dax. Yeah, but into the action we go. IBG on the prowl. We've got Asians down for the count already. Dax is hurting, and IBG might be in trouble here. Ziggy getting the hell out. The Dark Veil not going to be enough cover. Legends Gaming on the other hand, still happy to stay around in their building. Oh, but the ring is pulling, and full engage is gone. IBG, incredible work from Ziggy yet again. A taste of what we saw back in LCQ. We get it here again in the 8 backs out year 4. But Team Burger, you mentioned it a while ago here, Genome. They're alive, they're good in their spot, but they need to hold off many a member going their way. I was watching Ziki's POV there. That was one of the sickest spray downs and the quickest couple of kills you will ever see. He just peeks to the right of the oh, cat wall. Did, oh my god. To the fence. Oh, of all wow. things. Oh, after no. all that, after Ablo. beaming for about 400 damage in about two seconds, it's the fence that takes him down. <laughs> no trespassing. <laughs> Thy name is Legends Gaming, and that has to hurt. But another clip for IBG, another clip to watch out for. And this is why we say they're a team to keep an eye out. But that house is getting crowded. Call the fire department because this is looking very testy. Akuma though, the duo that we mentioned a while ago, still taking a few shots from afar. Killapaws working his way to that red evil shield. MXF though, staying away from all this carnage here, Genome, and they're the ones towards the hard north here. Yeah, look, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that decision to take the middle building instead of that northern building works out here for Team Burger because MXF, they've got the North to themselves. Legends Gaming actually had the South building to themselves. And then we've got the other four teams all clustered in around that middle building. Um, wow, you can actually see a couple of the Legends Gaming uh, team there. Wow, they're getting... Oh, they got completely removed! What the hell just happened there? MXF from afar. 30-30 repeater goes on and on and on like a song they want to sing again and again. But Team Burger, they've been sieging the staircase for so very long. We've seen Sharky try to throw some smokes, a few frags towards the doorway as well, but it's been fortified heftily. Yet again by Akuma, MXF though. They're hungry now for a few oh, more kills moving EMP. forward. But the EMP, as you said, Gopgas puts a stop to Artorias and a potential rampage as Akuma still on the inside. This is getting very dangerous now. Asaran almost getting up to red with that EMP. There were so many targets for him, but they only have the two alive. The rest of the teams, honestly, a lot of duos left in this. You can see Team Burger trying desperately to hold on to this staircase here and just eliminate anyone who comes out of it. Very much being the gatekeepers right now. Will they be able to get way back up and alive? Doubtful at this point, but maybe if there's enough, enough catwalls, they can obfuscate that vision and get themselves back up full and running. But so many teams now getting right into the action. And keep an eye on the Lightning Unicorn, just taking advantage of all the cards. The Jaku gets one, Serenity though, still behind the veil as MXF is eliminated now. Three squads remaining here, Sharky on the prowl. Lightning Unicorn is gone, and here we go, Serenity versus Team Burger. The Battle of the Aussies go in Serenity's favor, and they'll be the winners of this map. 
Oh boy, that is some big damage from Serenity at the end. And I mean, honestly, hats off to how they played that one. You gotta remember, they were slowly working their way past Mill. Um, you know, Bugie picking up a, K uh, a few kills as well as Legacy in that game. Um, and just slowly working themselves all the way back to that final circle. An impressive finish from them, Lace. to take out the win they're just going up up and up you know um if you weren't already aware we are here for apac south pro league showcasing uh groups a and c serenity obviously taking out the win there um team burger is another one i wanted to touch on as well you know they placed about us uh, i think it was 14th in the first match genome i feel like they're pulling their socks up uh coming into this second match yeah, you saw it was a pretty tough, uh, a pretty tough set, a series of decisions for them um, to get forward. I, I do wonder if they could have taken out MXF and then played from that northern side. Uh, it was a tough call, though. I think they made probably the, the safer play, but uh, it yeah. could have been the high risk, high reward option that rewarded them better at the end. Yeah, Nine Blood Gaming making us clench a little bit there with the two teammates down. Um, you know, they're managing to eliminate that team and then getting a full reset. You know, that's the that's the performance we love to see from Iron Blood Gaming, this edge hunting team, Gino. I mean, it was an incredible game from IBG. I once we get those scores, I'm not gonna spoil it right now, but uh, I can tell you they absolutely cleaned up in game two here, considering uh, they had that rough start where they actually had to pull back out of the circle. There's that there's that effort from Ziki that I was talking about. Oh my lord, that was a section. Um, yeah, so they got so many KP in this game. Um, and it was a, a pretty incredible effort considering uh, they had to rotate all the way out and all the way back in again. Yeah, exactly right. You know, and here we see Serenity just absolutely obliterating the team. But, you know, Team Burger, I think they only went in there with a little duo. And here we are with the scores and the damages. Serenity just literally eliminating the competition, just coming out there. Great performance from Legacy uh, and Mugi, you know, with Team Burger then having the two players up and still managing to secure second. Yeah, but then Casterize down to seventh position there, Lace. 14 kills. Sheesh. For I am Bud Gaming. Sheesh is correct. Taking out uh, the damage leaders, essentially, uh, for the lobby. Uh, that's a nuts result from them. But when you consider, you know, the kind of damage that the, the Ziki could output there, it's also kind of not completely surprising. So here we go. The standings after two games now. K uh, KPG still on top with 30. Um... Managing to edge up a little further, but Iron Blood Gaming. This is what we are expecting them to do, right? Obviously, they didn't get to play yes. uh, last week, but this is how we're expecting to get on top of lobbies, not through placement points. As you can see, they are much lower than everyone else around them, but through sheer force of will and firepower. Yeah, exactly right. And like I touched on, uh, Iron Blood Gaming, uh, you know, they're not new to competition. Um, they did place 10th, I believe, at the ALGS Championship. So, they, you know, they've got this in their belt. They've won prize money. They've seen the money before. I just feel like it sort of took that first match just to warm up the fingers a little. You know, they're a very aggressive squad. And like we just saw then, having 14 kills amongst them, that is exactly what I was looking to see from them. Well, I feel like they just, they're playing so close to the limit the whole time. Every time we see them, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're right on the edge, uh, you know, maybe taking a bang or walking in from zone. And if you keep doing that, uh, obviously you're going to run uh, through the flame sometimes. That's it. It's like having a little fire under there. You know, you got to keep going. But as well, we'll just head on over to a break and we will see you right after for some more action.
locked and loaded. Drop shocked and rocked. Say hello to the 4-0 first. And what an exceptional second game if you weren't already aware. We are here for APAC South Pro League. We're showcasing groups A and B. Um, you know, KPG having the first win of the day there and it's ready to take the second win. And not to sound like a broken record, but Apex South has produced the likes of Dark Zero back-to-back -back champions and, you know, Moist Esports as well. The teams today, are they living up to your expectations so far, Gino? I think definitely a couple of them are. I mean, you know, not everyone can win if we're only two games in, right, Lace? Uh, but yeah, we have seen, you know, Legends Gaming be making, uh, you know, the, the final circles consistently. Uh, we've seen some good um, play there out of Sharky. Of course, Easy Flash is uh, a permanent fixture. Always uh, a, there. A permanent <laughs> fixture on this graphic. Uh, you can see the Bangalore's leading from the front as well, right? You've got to remember... Um, she's a very high pick rate in this meta at the moment, but also um, generally the point man uh, for your composition, the one who is pulling out um, and doing a lot of that. Legacy being on top, honestly, shout out um, to him. That's a, that's a big play. And you've got to remember, you know, they had they were playing as a duo, Serenity, last week. So they have a lot of ground to make up. That's exactly right. Yeah, we did see them as a duo last week and then, you know, seeing them as a, as a full stack team, they can show us exactly what they're made of. You know, we've had two matches on Storm Point so far and we're gearing up to head to our last match on Storm Point. Um, but of course, not the last match of the day. Uh, any teams you feel have a little bit more confidence on Storm Point compared to World's Edge? Um, yeah, would have to go back through the, the stats on that one. I mean, I think as, as I was noting earlier uh dreamfire had a very rough storm point uh last week so maybe uh you know not that they're in this uh this lobby at the moment but uh you know that's it hopefully they can get there i'm gonna stop you there gino because we're about to see what they can do on storm point here we go with match three both at 30 points right now and it can be anyone's game moving forward given how the scoreboard's really been shaping up to be yeah i mean that's a that's a fair call uh a lot of teams getting a look in so far today md white white obviously one of the uh the fan favorites are uh, when we went back over to land they got so much support it was honestly incredible to see uh, along with dreamfire especially um, just having a quick look at the uh, the legends here, Dax. We have actually finally had a change, uh, and that's going to be for final start. Um, they were playing Bangalore Bloodhound Horizon earlier on, uh, and they have switched off the Bangalore. Insane! Switched off the Bangalore and actually picked up a Catalyst. So they'll be playing Catalyst Bloodhound Horizon. A very interesting composition. I mean, it's something many of these teams have already considered, right? If you have that Valkyrie and that Crypto, you're not playing at Bangalore. Another one to add on here. Bloodhound also getting so much love so far in this game. But here we have it, MXF. Keeping an eye for them right now in Barometer. We expected them to actually be contested all throughout the day. They're happy to have this BOI to themselves. And it kind of is because some of their scam results haven't been the best. I've seen other teams like Lightning Unicorn challenge this kind of location. Uh, Ash Esports being one of them. But MXF, they're going to get a pretty safe start to begin with here. Yeah, it's pretty safe for them. Gold Armor. Two mobile res beacons, uh, and yeah, as you said, you know, they Valk ulted essentially into God Spot last game, and now the, the zone pulls on them again, so a very fortuitous game here for MXF. Other teams around the middle, got a couple of teams actually going through Jurassic here, full engage, Ash, even MDY White actually uh, going straight past them in the Trident, will start taking some heavy fire as they pull past or both of those teams, but of course... With some some of the gates removed, 
uh, as you can see, sort of torn apart. Who knows? Maybe that was the Prowlers. Maybe that was something else. Um, either way, it does allow them safe passage. Well, not even, not really safe, but they, they do get through. <laughs> they get the orange, that's for sure. Luckily, Prowlersaurus Rex isn't around, but MDY White, they're ready to engage versus full engage. And it's already bounced off of fifth. Gundam in trouble here and needs to go for a little bit of a reset for now. Medkit is online, but MDY White, they're still sticking around on the inside. Barricade fortified, and Kizix is the first to fall here. Full engage, losing one early. And this is where they contend with. Do they actually just go away already? A little bit of considerations now. The drone detecting them as well. Ash Esports nearby, and full engage. They tried to play their namesake, but now they have to full evacuate from this point on. Kizix bleeding out on the ground here. Will his teammates be able to get back for him? Honestly, kind of doubt it. MDY may be happy to just sit in this orange for a while. You do see teams often, um, you know, they're happy to post up in there. As you said, though, Ash on the other side uh, means MDY actually have quite a few angles to worry about. Kizix may be making the longest push as a downed person I have seen. Not getting Control. thirsted. This is incredible <laughs> that MDY and Ash haven't teamed up to take him down. Now getting punched back to safety. Watson fences Ooh. and the pylon going up. My God, is he? <laughs> they're, they're doing it, guys. They're reviving Kizix. They gave him a premium package, basically, and Trauma team is ready to go yet again. Full engage. Back up to three. There's the push finally. But MBY White, they might have taken a little too long, and now they're gonna have to play against the Watson Ultimate. Bang Papa fifth though. Gonna fall first and foremost. Here comes MDY White yet again. Their fans spared full engage this time around. There is no escape as MDY White has their number. Yeah, but in the meantime, Ash have taken up their position. Ash moved forward to the orange. MDY White has that uh, very belated decision. Uh, you know, kind of spilt the end for them. You see some big grenades coming out there. And Yase really trying to finish them off. They've got such a small amount of cover to hide behind. Two of them down. Now it's only Mingyue. I hope that 3kp was worth it, guys. You know, sometimes they say it better late than never. But perhaps this time around, it was better never than late. Just the call really there from MBY White. Instead, they're going to be a victim from Jackyute and Lightning Unicorn from afar. And Ash Esports now getting some free loot along the way. They haven't found Mingyue though. He's hiding behind the spikes and Yasi doesn't see it just because of the little particle effect. It's a little bit over him, but finally spotted. Mingyue <laughs> has to get the hell out, out. Gravity cannon to try and make it to the barometer. Ash Esports also finally realizing they've been bamboozled, but please MD my white. They survive with a solo for the time being. Oh, I don't know how long he's going to make it, honestly. <laughs> Unless he knows a good spot in Barrow, this one could be tough for Mingyue. <laughs> There's... Uh, you know, under those bridges often will get played pretty quickly. Oh, okay. Once on Dumpling. Um, going to be taking on uh, Bekwa there. I think that was. Well, is the one in trouble right now. And on the Dumpling, giving chase and Googling versus Lightning Unicorn here. It's only Jackie left to try and stay alive. A solo yet again. As even Surprisey and Overlook Entertainment getting in the action from afar. We've seen this multiple times, so for once on Dumpling, always the siege, always the push. And yet again, it does get value, but BK Gaming, they're hunting as well, scanning for targets. Yeah, my bad, that was LU uh, taking the L oh. there, and it will be completed by VK Gaming, who end up finding Jack Cute down the bottom, all on his lonesome. So VK, sitting there, 13 points at the moment at number eight. Not too shabby at all. And the this ring. Is why you got the bloodhound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you're tracking those guys to the ends of the earth. If you know exactly where they are and you can lock down that they're alone way out towards middle. We have IBG trying to. Uh, they've actually found these guys on the crafter. It's time to send it. Now, we've seen this from teams with the bloodhound, especially even other regions. I saw this in NA before, seeing it now here in Apex out, and IBG is on the prowl again. The tree cleaner will get mopped up there by Dexter, and Dexter's just looking for anyone else. Really a standout from the Exo Clan before. Now, final start will get their ending here in Store Point, and IBG, they get even more KP now to wrap up with. Oh, and this is where I think IBG uh, potentially are, 
you know, separating themselves from the competition DAX. I wouldn't yep. be surprised at all if they locked down rotations. They, you know, could have uh, reasonably deduced um, that that team was there crafting and they pull up at exactly the right time to catch them off while it's happening. Obviously, with that crafting symbol, you can tell from quite some distance away, the team is there. You know their position and it's so easy for the pros to pull up and just put down that one clip damage there. So IBG, a good start here in game three after a, an absolutely wild game two where they picked up 14 KP. Yeah, but Serenity on the other hand, they're in trouble here as X and Y will spot them immediately. The winners from last game now left to a duo and X and Y. They've been struggling all throughout, looking to find their form here. X is the first one to already fight. Spike's thrown the frag though is the answer here. And X and Y is just looking for any kind of opportunity. They left one behind to make this effectively a 2v2. Serenity still sticking on around though with each other. And Jesco and Boogie getting a bit of cover right now. Detected though by a crypto again, X and Y. Will head on out, doesn't want to get victimized by any other team. And while Serenity survives for the time being, X and Y, they're waiting for an opportunity and to engage again. XD does so from above. Legacy will fall to the ground. And Serenity cornered like rats. They're getting exterminated here by X and Y in such a slow fashion. What can Jesco and Boogie do by this point? Well, the thing is, JR's nowhere near this fight, Dax. He's actually yeah. holding down the building for XNY. So at this point, even though they've got Legacy on the ground, it's still a 2v2 until now, when finally they're going to pull this yeah. back. Or will they just go playing the knockdown well? No, the Hemlock too much for them. And XNY do finish that off just very slowly, using the height there to peek and make sure they yeah. keep re-knocking them. Now that is one of the longest fights I've ever seen in Apex South. And you mentioned it, Genome. I also noticed a while ago, right? You have YC still watching out for Bear Claw and MXF, knowing that this can be a potential third party from afar. Yep. But just because of those even numbers, it takes them way too long. And they were in danger because of T4 nearby too. Yeah, so it was a very heads-up play, wasn't it? You know, they, you've, how many times today have we seen a team full send it and then just not be ready for that third party? So the fact that they were playing that slowly while also holding their position in so a zone, which, by the way, looks like it could be a very, very powerful one. I really like how X and Y played that. Yeah, it's just their evolution. They used to be one of those hard edge teams that just goes for the full sense and get those 30 plus KP games. They know how to play a bit more of the zone now. Kraber though in the hands of MDY Black. And if I'm not mistaken, I saw Augenstern also have a big Kraber in his hand. So double Kraber for MDY Black. Please don't look at them if you spot them. No shot. That is, uh, that's a little bit too scary for me. It's a bit of overkill, that's for sure. You get shot by two Krabers at once. It doesn't matter, you're just down immediately. Yeah, yeah, I guess at any point, right? That's a, that's at least 280. Actually, what's a leg shot for a Kraber? I don't know, I have to work that out later. Either way, um, you know, maybe it's just avoiding that disappointment that you get sometimes, you know. You, you get the headshot on the Kraber these days. It does like 189 if it's like a purple uh. helmet. And like, it just hurts you inside. So I think it's only, it's only fair that you get two Krabers and then you can avoid disappointment. <laughs> The match checks out, you know, and here we go again, though. X and Y having their own kind of scuffle as they do move in to MXF and Bear Claw Game. Akuma also here by the bridge, keeping an eye out as much as possible. But it's a big skirmish here by the southwest side of Barometer still. Uh, X and Y, they have called for the disengage. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. uh, this is Team Burger, by the way, on the other side of this from Akuma here. But they're ready for this. Once again, they've come through the zone. Doesn't give them a lot of options. And we do see that Horizon all come out immediately to try and deal with them. They are very quick um, to get rid of that, though, and they will survive just for now. Looks like Team Burger don't necessarily want to take this fight with Akuma. They're just trying to survive. But will they be forced because Pricey and Sharky are already down to flesh. Pricey goes down. So many targets looking at them from Barometer and Legends Gaming marking them yet again. Yukoi though finding Pricey there. Akuma will be on the hunt with the Dark Veil in tow. So it gives them a little bit of space to work with. Move on forward. Be careful because Barometer has many of these ones. They spot out one from Team Burger. Sharky desperately trying to top himself up. Way front line two, but way spotted Yukoi with a double kill already. More for Akuma. They are out for blood and hunting Sharky in the water. What irony is this? I mean, it's his home ground. That's uh, that's where he feels uh, 
Feels natural for the Shark, but unfortunately it's gonna have to go for higher ground at this point. Once again, Sharky is the last left alive for Team Burger Legends Gaming. They're holding one of the zipline spots over at Barometer. They're going the Sentinel rather than the Kraber. Oh, nice frag out from Player K to finish off KPG there. Swish and 4-3. Player K lobbing it like the best of them. Watching God Hand though, they're gonna need more than prayers to survive at this point. It's been a struggle for them so far in Storm Point, and X and Y might make it even more difficult. They're still trying to move in though towards the Southern Bridge. Pivot their way into that building, move into the next ring perhaps. But God Hand, they spot out the target. It's X and Y still seeking cover. Using Barrage now into play. XD dropping down. I Draco to the floor. And while we're watching this, Team Burgers has also been hunted down. And Sharky is turned into soup, unfortunately. God Hand, though, can they survive? It is not looking pretty for God Hand whatsoever. X and Y with another one. And they're really keeping their domain in check. I mean, this is incredible work from X and Y. Still operating as a duo. Uh, up with the red armors that, you know, almost gets them closer to having the health of a third person. Uh, meanwhile, JR still just in the building by himself. And and once again, the circle has pulled further that way. So X and Y, uh, not only with triple reds and six kills already, but looking fantastic as IBG try and get even further in from the north side of the ring. Overlook Entertainment currently under siege in this building. Of IBG, they just want kills. Over 70% of their points are from KP right now, and they want to add even more to that. Overlook Entertainment, now they're getting siege on in. Immediately, one will fall. The damage from up close. Ziki brings in the bolt and brings in the thunder. So one down, Overlook. Can they even find any chance to reset? They take the fight to IBG instead. And sure, they're gonna get a down along the way. It's IBG with advantage. IBG with the aim. And IBG with the wipe. I mean, it was a gold knock, actually. The Overlook managed to get that up in the middle of that fight, but it still wasn't enough to hold out IBG. That said, uh, we've seen how often IBG go down, so actually getting the gold knock of the loot there could really help their further rotation into the circle, because I can tell you there's a lot of teams in between IBG and the next zone as it pulls further south in Barometer. One of those, you can see, being BK, uh, BK Gaming, who are holding one of these zip buildings, the one across from Legends Gaming. And the really wise choice here from IBG, instead of running it to keep going in Legends Gaming, they take the old spot of Keep Gaming, move on to the left-hand side. Instead, they're gonna go contend with BK, as you mentioned. Keeping an eye out, though, for MDY Black as well. They know Bear Claw and MXF are nearby, and they're just sticking around in the tunnels. IBG, here we go again. Back to watching wow. Ziki do Ziki things. They're all dead to his hand. And IBG, they're just racking up these KPs immensely. Who's next on the list? Is it Wonton Dumpling? That is the team in front of them at the oh, moment. T4 a little bit further down, but Ziki has now, unfortunately, in the knockdown shield. Will the gold res come in once again to save them? Yeah, easy flash though, the marksman from up top. Legends Gaming keeping the pressure on. And we get the Rolling Thunder into play yet again. Creeping Barrage will do a bit of damage in IBG. They've gotten Ziki back up to his feet. So IBG survived for the time being. Thanks to the chaos up top of Barometer. You got Wanda Dumpling, you got Legends Gaming. And speaking of, Legends Gaming Player K with a central location. Dark Veil gonna be up straight from flame. Trying to get the hell out. But IBG, they smell blood yet again. There is just no stopping a squad like this that wants to keep fighting, that wants to keep going. And we see it from Asia's, we see it from Dexter. They catch out already one from Wanton Dumpling. Smoke though in the way. I don't think they have really digit threats to work with right now, but that's good enough for IBG so far. Instead, they're keeping their sights trained onto Legends here. A mere 10 or 15 seconds there to reset for IBG is not Whoa. only enough Whoa. to get them healthy, but enough to get squillions of KP here for the team who just do not stop. They are up to, what is that, 13 kills? No, sorry, 11 kills already. An incredible effort when only half the lobby has been eliminated so far, and about half of them at the hands of IBG alone. Speed kills in IBG is just in maximum velocity from this point on. Quick resets to get the bat into the game. Legends, on the other hand, stuck to a solo. And IBG even wanting to track down anyone who tries to play the evac tower. Keep going, playing to the mantra, moving forward down into the building where MXF and Bearclaw have been staking their claim for so very long. IBG 
though, knocking on doorsteps yet again. The fences are set though, and IBG reassessing. KPG does find one along the way elsewhere, and IBG still sticking around here by the doorway. Yeah, then now they know they have to slow down a little bit. Dexter just hit a scan and he got the dreaded 10 plus hostiles uh, in front of him because, of course, <laughs> there are still quite a few squads around here. Iron Blood Gaming don't have a good spot yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they get one soon with how insanely on point their team fighting has been in this series so far. I mean, the win condition here for IVG is to make that 10 into a 7, into a 4, into a 0, basically. And their Rampage can continue if they find a good engage with Bear Claw Legends and keep going, still sticking all around. Keep going also, they just have a small <laughs> corner to work with. I know it's fun to be by the beach, but man, not like this. I mean, they're gonna have to... Get the, uh, get the sun house, get the sunscreen on, I think, if they're going to be running through the zone to get to their next spot. Uh, unlike a team like, you know, MDY Black here, they're sitting uh, right in the middle of the zone with a couple of energy weapons and still that double Kraber in their hands. Other teams in notable positions, you've got XNY to the south, um, down the bottom by themselves, and T4 actually have a decent position over to the east as well. The rest of the teams clustered up towards IBG. Can they take further advantage of the Chaos now that they have this high ground? This could be uh, potentially a kill record game. I mean, this is, and maybe even a kill record series for Iron Blood Gaming, uh, considering how wild they've been going. I mean, it is a possibility. I guess my concern here for MDY Black with those two Cravers, they can ill afford to miss those shots. Overall, X and Y has just been waiting for opportunity and doing so well to get those reds up. IBG, though, yet again with the fight, they find the final rat of Legends Gaming player Kane cannot play anymore, and IBG send their talent towards T4 here, all the way to the east. They're ready to become the beast, with Argon Stern doing damage that needs to be done. The Black Hole controlling IBG, and now that the one's in trouble, Asia's the only one still standing here. T4 looking to hunt this final member, and Asia's. Does he even find any room to work with Ziggy being revived on up? But MXF have had enough of this rampage. They're keeping IBG suppressed. Is IBG still alive though somehow. And instead X and Y will have to back on the way. Artillery hurting here. The side of X and Y. You got MXF making sure that Ziggy will fall. And IBG, they're now caught in the crossfire. MXF obviously a great position overlooking a lot of the lobby here. And uh, everything's coming out. It's the it's the missile swarm. It's a lot of those grenades as well. MDY Black. They've been scaring off teams with the Kraber. I saw a couple of people uh, on approach there, um, absolutely backing off after taking the 140s to the body. MXF now finally having to drop off. Can they finish off this position? Yes, they will eliminate Bearcore Gaming. But how much further can they go? Yeah, T4's gone as well, and MXF have the high ground now. Eventually, the neighbors are gone. Who else might be on the list as Asia's the only one still standing? And oh no! We gotta see the rest of the action, but MXF, they've had prime opportunity so far here. Genome, they, we've seen them wait for those kind of moments. And a uh, heartbreaker that happened near the end, but still, it looked to be such a stellar last ring there, Lace. That's it. We just love Apex Legends and how it works so swimmingly. Like, we may have not wrapped up our last match so successfully, guys. But you know what? We're still passionate. And can I just have a little conversation about what we saw from Iron Blood Gaming? Like, again, showing their cohesion and aggressive play style. Um, you're bunking in a building? I don't think so. Like, they're still going to jump in there. They're kind of a little bit like cockroaches, okay, in a good way. You know, you can't get rid of them, right? They just keep surviving. Okay. We saw, I think, Asia's there right at the end before where our match disappeared. Um, that, you know, they're still holding on for dear life and having, like, all these kills along the way um you know it's awesome to see genome that they they added uh dexter to the roster and he seems to be performing well for his team there yeah i mean you know dexter i dexter i i guess okay i mean it's a, it's a bit hard when you look at the history of this team right because i would say dexter's sort of been the core of that team for a while um but obviously they have changed names from Tom Young Kung over to IBG, uh, and it's been a bit of a shuffle. Uh, like, you know, Ziki was there at the start and then came back way later. Um, but look, regardless of that, I would say all three of them, Lace, are absolutely kind of killing it. Um, from what we've heard, 
and, and, and I mean, I was in the game as well, and I think the entire lobby yep. actually crashed. So we'll just have to wait and see what the admins say uh, about this one. That's a real uh, shame because that was yeah. that was one cracker of a game there. I mean, IBG, if they don't, you know, if we have to start the whole game again, because I, I honestly have no idea what we do in this situation. Um, Gino, you know, the passion was just too strong in our region that we crash a <laughs> right? lobby. We are just so good that yeah. the Apex can't even handle it. Dax, any, <laughs> like, you know, from what we saw in that match um, to when it ended, uh, anybody you had your eyes on that was really just outshining the rest of the competition? I mean, X and Y was something we were talking about for so very long. They took the south side of bar Barometer. They played this style where they go for the 1 2. As soon as they get a knock on a team, they send two towards the bridge still keep that elevation and always keep tabs of Bear Claw as well as FXK, I believe, who were looking for those kind of opportunities. They built those red shields. They had so much space to work with and it really felt like if IBG's Rampage could be stopped and we saw a bit of it, right, when T4 was able to contend against them, that could have been their opportunity to strike. So that's another consideration to really watch out for. These kind of teams that stay away from a squad that just heftily rampages, right? You don't want to feed yes. the beast, you run away from it. Yeah, I think we saw MXF there sort of holding hype for a little bit, right? And uh, Asia's trying to get a bit of a clutch res in the corner. You know, they're always rotating with that gold shield, but, uh, you know, Asia's still holding on at the end before we, uh, you know, couldn't see the rest. But uh, no, it was a great performance, um, Dax, by MXF. You know, they placed about, uh, they, were, they were quite on the bottom of the leaderboard, I believe, in the first match, I believe about 18th, you know, and they're just rising up through the ranks, hitting fourth uh, in the second round and then, you know, placing in our top three uh, just before Dax. I mean, uh, something else interesting that was happening right as that game crashed there at the end was X and Y actually pulled off a respawn. Mm. Um, so oh. I, I was like, damn, there's like one X and Y guy like way, way out in the zone. How is he surviving? It's like zone five. And then I pulled up. He was literally jumping out of the ship as that final zone was closing. Um, yeah, so like it was going to be a very fun final circle. Uh, there at the end. I feel like we were robbed. I just feel like I, I wanted to see how many kills IBG got at the end of it, whether they won that game or not. Because you mentioned a while ago they were already up to like a dozen near the start of that rampage. They got a few more along the way. They took down Legends. They took down, uh, I believe, once on Dumpling. It was just piling on for IBG and truthfully the replay we have right now here is the IBG highlight reel for a reason because these guys are just one of those hard edge teams that you have to fear for. When I looked at Group C and I saw the name IBG, I already knew a game like this could come their way and we saw a glimpse of it here today. Yeah, exactly right. They had about uh, it, it roughly about a, like half, uh, 12 points. Um, you know, coming out of their second match where they had about 14, um, you know, we could have seen them call up a little bit more, but they did have, you know, two teams sort of keeping a watchful eye on them uh, over the top with just Asia's left alive. Um, and I do believe that we're going to uh, be seeing uh, the lobby come up soon. We're just getting all our players sorted after, you know, one of the things that can happen in these things where the lobby doesn't like to work properly for our genome. You know, I am kind of new to the cast and new to the desk and in my eyes you know we watched the algs championships and uh i know you guys at home we always have a little bit of a ah moment when the the match doesn't go our way um well there's, there's know... two ways to look at it right, Lace. <laughs> yeah. well, one is uh you know it's it's kind of sad for the players who obviously you know teams like ibg who or xmy who had a fantastic what was that game three um yeah. and then who knows there's there's also a couple of viewers at home just being like hey are you saying we we, we basically get an entire another game of algs to watch <laughs> hell yeah that's oh. it not only do we do have you know a and c today you know we do have another six matches after that we've got b and c it's a long day for us dax <laughs> yeah. so uh well we'll just sit tight be patient and we're just going to take a really quick break and we'll see you after it
surprise. We are, of course, here with Apex South Pro League, where the words down under mean that things happen a little bit differently here at Australia. Uh, we love to give you guys more action, so we'll be showcasing game number three again. You can see your favourite teams from uh, Australia, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, battle it out again, uh, you know, for the chance to win some cool prize money and, of course, you know, their chance to play at land genome. I bet you you're itching to just roll this again. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't quite ready to let go of Storm Point, so I said, hey, guys, let's just run it back. Uh, let's have, let's do it all again. I mean, it's a shame you can't, you can't do, like, exactly the same circle again, but oh well. Exactly right, but here we go, guys. Let's run it back again. Game number three on Storm Point. Let's fire away. You want to let go of Storm Point, wouldn't you, Genome? Because we're back at it yet again. Game number three. Take number two, and we will take back all those KP that IBG built on, unfortunately. But we saw how exciting it got towards Barometer. We're watching now the dropship send us over towards the northwest side. And what I'm watching out right now also, of course, is what will IBG do next? Their Rampage, that, that kind of momentum, they have to bring it to this final game on Storm Point. Oh, I hope so. I hope they're not discouraged by, you know, sort of... Because uh, obviously, any team who did well in the last game are going to feel a little cheated, right? Like, they're going to yeah. feel a little rough about uh, having to do that all over again. Um, you know, as we said, Circle's not going to exactly be the same again. Uh, even the... Apparently, the Legend compositions aren't going to be the same again. With, once again, Final Start switching it up. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught that on the, the first screen there. They've switched now to... Bloodhound Conduit huh? Revenant. Revenant? In this day and age, so a very interesting Apparently. course. Apparently. And you play Revenant, it is a little bit selfish, sure, but if you can get the, the ultimate online, a little bit of nastiness to the front line, then it's a legend that can hunt for some targets. So uh, it's pretty interesting when we see a Revenant here in yeah, eight backs out but Level we're watching two. of course ibg happy to still play checkpoint watching bacto towards the ring it's very reminiscent of a ring we saw last week here genome it does seem like the pylon is where the action will be occurring and wanton dumpling is in the center of it yeah it could be i think it may might even pull a little bit further down south, south potentially yeah. to somewhere to like echo HQ or Coastal Camp even, mm -hmm. um, but you know, we, yeah, last time we had a pile on Circle, it was a tricky one, right, Dax? It was ping-ponging all over the place. It was actually quite hard for those teams to read. Um, I mean, having a look at IBG that we, as we just were, they did get that uh, player scan in checkpoint, so they're going to be able to hit that and have a look. Um, you know, they'll probably wait maybe a minute or two just to see where the other teams are heading uh, and get full value out of that scan. Because, of course, they don't run a console character. They don't run a ring, uh, a controller, of course, who can scan the ring console. I mean, if they find the players, that probably is next ring, right? And that's been the call for IBG. Also, with the beacon available, they can scout out final start to their north if ever they choose to do so. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them start heading the way of Sita Station and beyond moving forward. MDY White, one of the teams we see constantly trying to get one of the Strident flying by the coastal camps, really, from Devastated Coast into Echo HQ. And just passing by Serenity and Lightning Unicorn plus T4. So three squads might create MDY White. Also next on the chopping block here might also be MXF, who had a good zone game a while ago. They have to pull away from Barometer this time around. Yeah, man, this is like the landing at Normandy here. Like, ships Ooh. just pulling up all over the place to assault the beach here at Echo HQ. Now, of course, it's Serenity who start off in Echo HQ, but they don't have a Watson. Um, and this is why I was interested, Dax, because obviously as one of the new POIs, it's interesting to see how teams play these new POIs um, and these new circles when we do see them. Now, uh, Serenity seem to be playing this from the the main level of Echo HQ. So, that you know, they're not taking the roof. Um, but they have a, a Catalyst, not a Watson, which means with the big doorways, they can't necessarily, uh, you know, use utilize Catal uh, Catalyst fully because you can't go up those doorways. They're too big for that. 
<laughs> yeah, this that barricade ain't gonna be the size you want. And I understand here for certainty, you play that content as well because you're in the middle of two POIs. You can get thirded at a moment's notice. And even in other regions, we've seen this POI be contested by many, many teams fighting for the middle. So Sorrenti, they have the center point, yes, but not the legend composition that really can maximize it. On the other hand, though, you got Ash, you got Lightning Unicorn, MXF, everyone's banking on this spot, this Echo HQ to be the headquarters of that final ring later on. Yeah, so a lot of teams just vying for, uh, for position, trying to find their spot early on. A couple of teams who have uh, maybe misidentified the ring, full engage and want on Dumpling actually taking some shots at each other over at the pylon. Um, because neither of them do have the ring information. So that's kind of why they're over there by themselves at the moment. Uh, potentially some other teams going past now. Bearclaw Gaming coming in from the north will run past. An early wingman for Boring here means that Wonton Dumpling are looking to get a little bit aggro on this. And uh, full engage, they've already used their catalyst wall to try and disengage a little bit. Oh, I don't know. If Wants on Dumpling are gonna let them get away. I mean, they want this. It already says it in their name. Whole W strong as Wants on Dumpling are taking the combat away from Full Engage. Full Engage, though, two of them inside the house right now, setting up the pylon as well. But Wants on Dumpling, they spot it immediately. Doorway opens, and this is dangerous for Jump Jib Jib because he will fall first and foremost to Gugu. They break the shields of the other members of Full Engage right now, and Full Engage is gonna be packing up four store points. They all already as they're the ones first eliminated here Contact. first squad to go down here in our revisit of game number three if you are uh, you walked away and you came back and you're like hold on i just saw game number three we have had a lobby restart um so we are playing out game number three to completion once again this time uh however the ring will not be shifting towards uh, barometer like it was last time. We are going down towards Echo HQ, one of the new POIs here in Season 19 of Stormpoint. Now, what do you mean, guys? This is the real game number three. Don't let <laughs> anyone else tell you otherwise. Watching out, though, for T4. Keeping an eye out and holding as much as they can. I guess considerations right now, T4, Legends Gaming, these kind of squads need to rotate Energy on in. And speaking of Legends Gaming right now, right, they have this building the for themselves. Yeah. It's been a bit of a struggle though for Legends near the tail end of these games. I think I've noticed Genome coming into Ring 4, Ring 5, we're still at double digits. Sometimes even Ring number 6, there's still five kind of squads alive. And we haven't really seen Legends Gaming find the opportunities to third party as much as they would like. Yeah, look, maybe not, but you know, Easy Flash is already sitting on seven kills. Uh, you new. know, they're, they're in fifth place. They're, they're not doing too badly at this point. I think, um, you know, the interesting thing is, as we have a look at this circle and where it's pulling... Oh! <laughs> That's a spicy one, fellas. Everyone, almost everyone banking on this being an Echo HQ circle. And from what we can see there, it's probably going to end up Coastal Camp. Whoever... Uh, maybe even a team like Want on Dumpling or one of those edge teams just waltzes straight into God Spot here. Yeah, and look at that, MDY Black, they're trying to get into Echo HQ, and they might just have to contend with the single building right in front of them. That one gravity cannon actually being their cover as they're scouting with the crypto. We're watching though Bear Claw Gaming, one of the teams already on the inside. Serenity in God Hand also nearby but wouldn't it be nice to see this ring give them such a big surprise later on bear claw though fortified for the time being and holding on the inside watson's really reigning supreme here in apex out yeah well, they're gonna hold it down tight right until the next circle at least when everyone uh, I'm, I'm expecting to see a mad scramble from these teams over echo hq as they change positions uh, meanwhile, we've got IBG who just flew over the top of final start up to the, the north of the map and uh, they were literally flying over them when final start hit the player beacon. Um, does that help IBG or does that, I mean, does that help final start? I don't think so. IBG looked like they're going to get the better of them once again. It's time to hit that big red button, but the tree cleaner will mop up Dexter to begin with. Asian Stone makes the trade work, and IBG back to IBG things. They continue on with the Rampage. They find two already. Final start only having their conduit up on her feet. Asian Stone around for one more target. Here he comes tracking down the opposition well, and final start will be gone as well. Okay, very nice. Now as we look... 
towards this next circle. I think what we need to think about here is, Dax, uh, this, this... <laughs> okay, talking about priority, right? You know, yeah. how fast you get to rotate into uh, a certain position depending on where your POI is versus where the ring ends up. Often, if you have low priority, you'll wait and you'll hit a beacon in zone 3 to try and work out where zone 4 is pulling and just try and take advantage of maybe some empty spaces because of that. We are seeing this happen and it is going very much to favor those teams this game because the zone pull has been so hard for these teams to read. As a result, Overlooked Entertainment, they have that Ring 4 knowledge. XNY, they also have that same knowledge and these teams have now pulled up into Coastal Camp and will get God Spot. And now it's time for them to see who's actually going to be the one to hold Cold Style Camp by them. Loads of Wants and Dumpling. On the other hand, though, they fend off Andy White Blank and they were trying to give chase, but they realize many a member here in the server are all sticking around and calling HQ their mm. home. Uh, well, but you know what's you know what's funny about this position from Wants on Dumpling though, Dax, is that it works. they were they were well they wanted to hold the gatekeeping position, right? So they, yeah. they sit up here on the hill and they're like, oh yeah, you know maybe a couple of teams will rotate through, uh, you know around from the <laughs> northern coastal camp and try to get through from Echo HQ and we can take them on. A couple of teams. It's not going to be a couple of teams, Dax. It's going to be like fifteen teams going the other way from Echo HQ to coastal camp. So no. I don't know. They might have more on their hands than they can actually handle here. More. Than they might be able to bite off more than they can chew. Look, it's one of those doors where you realize the open and closed parts are on the wrong way. They just have to flip it over, <laughs> and that's, that's how many squads still waiting for them. I think that's around 14 squads over onto the eastern side right now. The only ones west of Wanton Dumpling right now are IBG heading to Pylon, X and Y over onto a godly spot here in Coastal Camp, and overlook okay. inside the building. That's that's pretty much it. Wanton, they, they're going to be fighting around 40 people at this point. <laughs> moment of truth the next ring is revealed and you can see a lot of a lot of arrows pointing left because all of a sudden every single team is looking to the west and being like oh god how do we get over here if you're lucky you might be say akuma down the bottom here it's a quick it's a it's a simple stroll along the beach for them quite a scenic little walk for a lot of these other teams as you said if there's 14 teams in echo hq they've got to work out how to navigate around all of them uh, and somehow make their way over to Coastal Camp. This is going to be a really fun game to watch. Yeah. Well, the first ones to evacuate are Akuma. They see the high tide warning and they're moving into the camp to just evacuate and face off against Overlook. Killapaz, Yukoi, and Crusade, they're moving forward. And we said again, the only team we have here with triple rollers so far. They've done a decent enough job, but they know they can do a bit better since they lose a target early on in your genome. I think that's really the problem right now for Akuma. They lose one early, they try to play as a duo, and it becomes really tough for them to rack up KP from that point on. Well, th this kind of position uh, certainly feels like it's going to favor them a little bit more this time. Teams honestly being a little bit slow to get going here, but I don't blame them because I feel like they... The, the first person to move is probably just going to get shot down immediately by everybody else. So teams, uh, you know, who can take advantage of any small spot in the zone, I think they can get uh, in zone 4, will probably just opt to hold on to that and hope that the teams rotating uh, will go out first. I think it's a really smart evac tower there from Keep Going Gaming, flying by IBG. Team Burger Zone facing off oh, against no. another target, and it's MDY facing actually catching out Sharky. Team Burger taking a little bit more than they could really chew and Burger is gone. Feast it on. Serenity also looking to get the hell out for the time being as chaos ensues here at Echo HQ. Oh my, okay. Bear Claw could be the next casualty for this. You can see them down the bottom trying to hold out against Fifty White White. Lightning Unicorn ahead of them. Even God Hands are also getting involved in this. It is there's about two or three five-way fights happening down here on the south side of the map. Welcome to Apex South. We saw this last week by the tree. This time around, it's chaos on Echo HQ as Bearclaw stands with one. It's Heck all alone with a pylon to call his friend. MDY Black will be eliminated along the way. Lightning Unicorn tried to carve a path through Bearclaw as well as alongside God Hand, but Serenity is the one still alive and fighting. They know this Ash Esports and Legends Gaming are nearby. They're taking the fight to Rococo already. IBG though, actually catching out KPG towards the north hand side, but we watch Serenity with their own siege moving forward. 
forward now past the pylon looking for anyone else to hunt squad still falling left and right ash now gonna be confirmed here by serenity and the rest but while this happens it will be god had also caught out lightning unicorn they have a good perch to work with on the south side staying away from all the other squads here as mxf will be a, just a witness elsewhere sickening roller sprays there from serenity to take down ash but They've now got 40 seconds to reset and work out what their next move is. There's a mountain that they need to move before they get to the next zone. But it's not just them. It's also Wanton Dumpling still sitting on the hill. It's, uh, uh, we've got, you know, T4 behind them as well. MXF will go down the south side and probably be okay there. Uh, you know, Evac Towers, God, they're certainly going to be at a premium, I think, as this next zone closes. Yeah, the ones who split them from X and Y, and we see JR here fending off IBG for the time being, seeing them slide down. IBG also looking for Bible, and the scan is actually catch out the last rat here of KPG. Bible has to say his prayers and run on away. He meets YC's nemesis from above, and KPG trying to survive with bated breath. It's really been quite the test for Bible, but X and Y still very comfy in their spot here. So if you've ever played coastal camp you know that this sniper tower can be especially uh powerful so x and y sitting up there we've got serenity moving into coastal camp why don't we listen in to see how they deal with this situation they're gonna start it off with a 200 beam all right they're just trying to reset here though you're gonna get back up they throw the armor swap over to him can they get this uh the ult down there from the oh man before they even get a chance to breathe serenity they look, did a good job honestly but uh too many teams around them they just get crushed in the middle of so many good fighting teams ibg of course going to be one of them and i believe that was asia's uh, a black hole there that got them eliminated their perfection really with that black hole and IBG silencing a squad right in front of them. They're ready again to go on the prowl. Overlook looking likely to be the next victim alongside Lightning Unicorn. We're seeing Wanton Dumpling though for once not actually in the thick of things. Staying away from all the action. Akuma on the other hand getting the spot, getting the ring to go in their favor. And they're just happy at the center but X and Y from above looking around for any target IBG looting for the time being getting themselves geared up for the next engage okay so the carnage is mostly over now seven teams left alive the hard part is kind of done you made it out of Echo HQ you got into coastal camp and we've still got a couple of teams uh, sitting up in the buildings. Then you've got a Kuma actually sitting down on the south side, very close to where this circle is going to finish. I think these guys will be in a fantastic spot, honestly, to close out this game. I mean, they got a good rotation early on before all that carnage over Echo HQ, Lightning Unicorn on the other hand, here by the tower. I do believe though, we can listen into Akuma right now as Wanta Dumpling is right in front of them. I'm playing yeah, you can back, bang out them too. Yeah, bang out, bang out, bang out, bang out. I bang out, I bang out to the team far. Yeah. I'm playing under. They should be playing on my right side ping, but yeah. the low ground spot. Yeah, I'm on low ground right now. I can try to peek a little. Yeah, yeah. Flying, flying, flying! They're flying! AB on one. Yeah, yeah, be careful, be careful. Yeah, oh, I'm fuck, I'm come under, come under, come under, come under. You're fine, you're fine, come under. Right side pushing us. Okay, I'm back on the back. I'm up right side, I'm up right side. Chill, 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 chill. Yeah. Get back, bro, on our fucking back, bro. Stay on me, stay on me. Can we queue up? Yeah, going. Oh, dot, 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 dot. Three up there, three up there. Just stay below here. I'm racing. Are they, did they go yeah. back up? Yeah. They, they went up, they went up. They're racing queued, they're racing queued. I'm smoking. Face yeah. a low, face a low. They might fight each other first. Digis, people have digis. Yeah. You can untie, you we can just untie. Stay here. We just stay here, we just stay here. Is that the knock or what? I have no shields, no shields at all. Here, up here. I'm ready on head. Just watch for me, watch for me. Come here, Kibi, come here. After yeah, you yeah. heal, after you heal. Ready, 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 ready. Come, 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 come. We need to pick this. Yeah, yeah. I'm picking. Come on, in front of me. Come on, come on. Push up, push up, push up, push up, push up. Bang there, bang there, pay your life, pay your life. Don't bang. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Knock. Last guy one, last guy one. Fight together, fight together. Oh, no, 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 last up. Oh. He's one. Kill him. No, no. Oh. 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 
Akuma, they were trying to sit by the coast, bothered by Lightning Unicorn, and they got a bit of a reprieve there, Genome, but eventually the fight against Wonton Dumpling doesn't oh go their way. God. I mean, look at that, he's on 10 kills! Currently, Pete God, and I can tell you, he was on one health, right? That The red armor he had there, that was the armor swap. So, you know, when they were saying he's won, they weren't lying. Akuma was so close to taking out that fight, but instead, Wonton Dumpling looking to pull off one of the biggest bags uh, of Apex South here if they can get a dub here. Because I can, I can tell you, most of the other teams down the bottom, they're kind of getting into it uh, by themselves now. Overlooked Entertainment, probably their big uh, competitors right now. Yeah, they had the height and they're trying to send everyone away. IBG now gonna be gone. Overlook taking the fight towards Lightning Unicorn and Wonton Dumpling. It's just being as patient as can be. Gravity lift though, and up. here comes Wonton Dumpling. Enough is enough, they say, but he got to the floor. Here comes Jackie Chan. XDZ is at the ready. Give him a salute as Wonton Dumpling has the elevation now. Just beaming down on any target. The smoke's gonna be out as well. And keep an eye out. This vault has a dizzy trip. And you know this guy is an absolute menace on the inside. He got to the floor boring as well. And Wonton Dumpling is sent home packing. Overcooked by over. Overlook and Overlook Entertainment will take this one instead. But three. But take two. Uh, it just seems to be just as action packed as we hoped it would be. Oh boy, teams got themselves a second chance. Um, there, Dax. You know, we uh, had to replay again on Storm Point, but it was just as juicy as the first time. Um, you know, we had a, a fair few teams, uh, as I saw, sort of uh, making a rotation to secure those placement points, um, but in the wrong direction. So it seemed like once on Dumpling there, you know, they were just uh, going to fight a horde of zombies. They had yep. that position on the top of the hill overlooking all those teams. Um, you know, I know one of them uh, pulled out about 10, 10 kills at the end of the day. Um, but take us through the replay, Dax. I think it was pretty insane what Lonson Dumpling had to deal with <laughs> all throughout that game. I said a while ago they would have to deal with around 40 people. They killed 14 in total and got to that top three. But from all the momentum that they had, Overlook entered Eastman. They did such a good job staving off the initial gravity lift. They caught one early on, made them down. They took that advantage. And we saw a while ago in, in our take one of map number three, MXF, we saw how important elevation was. Overlook did the same. Kept players like, like Unicorn at play. Teams rather like a Unicorn. Teams like Akuma. When it got down to it, though, back in Echo HQ with utter chaos, you'd have a few of these teams wisely finding the fights. Lightning Unicorn, an example. Why they made it the top two? Because they made sure the south side of Echo was all theirs. And then on the other hand, I feel for teams like X and Y, they called the zone early, but they were caught by Lightning Unicorn. They were caught by Overlook, and instead, they only end up in six because of it. Exactly right, yeah. X and Y seem to have the knowledge that the rest of the lobby didn't, but unfortunately they couldn't really like solidify that zone with everybody coming in. And you know, when you've got Iron Blood Gaming showing us their aggressive edge hunting team, they don't care if they have to do it twice, they're just going to collect souls along the way. And as we have a look at what souls have been taken out, Overlooked Entertainment! Absolutely beautiful position there at number one and uh, just seeing what they can do. You know, we haven't seen too much from Overlooked uh, in our first couple of matches. So mm -hmm. it's really nice to see them up on the board and then coming in second there, Lightning Unicorn. You know, they've been not only the best looking logo ever, Dax, <laughs> but, you know, they've been performing consistently. Yeah, best name. And we've seen so far always making it into those podium spots, giving them a chance to get back into the top five. Serenity, though, still in lead. IBG racking up KP as well. I think I saw them get nine kills there and a good amount of damage. So that's really been quite a ratio to watch out for compared to the KP and placement points. And I guess really the concerning factors here have to be for Legends Gaming and Team Burger. We know how talented these players are in our region and they are still in the top 10, yes, but not as much of an impact as they would like for today. Yeah, exactly right. You know, a fair few teams come out the back performing extremely well. You know, we've seen uh, Legends Gaming as well, you know, and as you touched on Team Burger, you know, they uh, they can be consistent if they want to be, but they didn't perform just right then. But uh, you know what? That was the end of Storm Point. We're not going to do it again, I promise. Um, but we will see you back after the break for World's Edge.
temporary. Welcome back, everyone, as we just finished our matches on Storm Point. It was action-packed, to say the least. Uh, we're showcasing the talent from Apex South, uh, a region who has turned into a major region. You know, we're sending more teams to land than ever. Uh, we're doubling our prize pool. Uh, and as we hit halfway through our six matches, we are about to go on to World's Edge Genome. Are you excited to change maps? Are you excited to see if there's any composition changes? Take us through what you might think will happen on this OG map. Yeah, look, hopefully both of those, right? And that means uh, also we get changes, of course, in the drop spots as well. So why don't we head into the beacon and take a look at our drop spots for World's Edge. With Moist moving on, um, you know, Overlook <laughs> is open. We have some, seen them sometimes take that in international lobbies. Uh, usually they had better ones than that, I guess, in APAC South. But then you've also got uh, new teams like Ash Esports taking Epi Survey, which, uh, you know, again, is probably one of those less contested POIs decks. I mean, yeah, Ash Esports, they, I think they traded with Kakoyi last week, right? In terms of POIs, giving them Monument instead. So they're still sticking around in Epi. You have Final Stark also here by Skyhook. And I guess really my consideration to really watch out for here as Team Burger moves into Trials is who gets Harvester. It was double contested from last week, but that was, of course, A versus B. Lightning Unicorn also going to be nearby towards Countdown. And this is very interesting as well here, Genome. MXF and Akuma nearby Mraja Twa can be a staging ground from Akuma moving forward. Yeah, does that mean that Akuma are thinking about just landing Mirage Atwa? Does that mean they will actually contest for, um, you know, Fissure and then they, whoever wins that gets both of those or sort of that one and plus POI there? It's hard to say, honestly. God hand, one of the newer teams, they get Geyser. Um, again, something that, uh, you know, teams often end up with rather than choose themselves. And then IBG and Bear Claw, uh, I find it interesting that those guys are down over at more than stacks because uh, as two of the closest POIs in the game, it does offer IBG opportunities to just pick up immediate KP um, in that instance. I'm extremely excited to see IBG head out with stacks and just carve a path of destruction towards Dome or Big Bot, as you mentioned. Launch height also from XNY, yet again, an edge team who can try and play zone later on. They're going to start on the outskirts, and it's something that they love to do as much as possible. One thing to take note too, keep going gaming without DNZ around. Harvester is right for their taking, so I really hope keep going gaming. Don't play that uh, Revenant anymore that we saw a while ago. Play yes. a little bit more of that first game kind of style that we saw a while ago. Yes, and uh, you know, uh, exceptional map for us and bringing you home. We're going to head into game number four. This is World's Edge. Let's get it started. Take it away. We finally made it here, Genome. Finally, we're in World's Edge. Enough of Storm Point for the time being. And we'll see what Legends Gaming can do from Lava Siphon in the center. Welcome back, folks. Eight backs out here on the main channel, here at Longshot, and everywhere and anywhere. You guys having watch parties and whatnot. We love that you guys are supporting the region. But keep an eye out now. Ring pulling towards the center here, Genome. And I'm keeping an eye out who has a bit of priority. Actually, towards Epicenter and Climatizer. BK, Serenity, they're going to look for a good location moving forward. Yeah, correct. We'll be heading over there. And just in terms of what we were uh, wondering about with that uh, on, on the beacon at the start, MXF. Yes, they will just take Mirage Atois, as well as Akuma um, sitting happily in Lava Fissure. So no contests here in uh, groups A and C. Um, they've they've worked it out. Everyone yeah. happily uh, just sort of keeping the peace for the moment. Um, you know, as you said, Team Burger not just in trials, right? Uh, this POI, I think even across all of ALGS, honestly, has seen some pretty good teams, uh, you know, sort of pull up there recently. So I'm not super surprised that Team Burger are uh, taking both trials and Skyhook West. Yeah, it's a historical area. I can't remember... If I can remember correctly, rather, it was an EXO or Tom Young Kung taking that kind of area before. 
or one of those old school teams that really love to play from trials and move forward into countdown where usually you'd have dream fire we see though already in our legends bloodhound still gonna be around you see a oh, single rate up as well and it's something of an interesting pick we've seen from last week here genome the rate is in the hands i believe of mdy black this time around and they're running the crypto and the watson with it yeah wow okay so that is uh that's kind of closer to what we saw legends gaming running sometimes on world's edge last year dax uh you know i think i can't remember if it was exactly those three it was definitely wraith watson and then plus one um and you know straight from flame was you know said that was basically his brainchild um for world's edge it's especially powerful when you end up in places like skyhook places where there's a lot of buildings um, because the Wraith portal just gives you some rotation options in the late game that you can't really get otherwise. Yeah, and also to take note, second most pick legend right now is Watson right behind Bangalore. Other teams, of course, still running the Valkyrie Crypto that has become a bit of a meta here also in Apex out. Using Aya though for keep going gaming. Yet again, I have to say it. It's good to see them get to run around the map when they were 0 3 last time around on the Harvester contest. They have to deal with Ash and MDY White, though, nearby. Yeah, so nothing kicking off just yet. Um, and to answer one of your questions there, Dax, you know, who used to hold out Skyhook West and Trials? I mean, I think there's yeah. been some different teams over the years. The one that sticks out to me uh, personally was. Uh, well, going by different names, but whichever team Nutsuru Sama was ah, on, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, because he loved the fact that you'd always, uh, you know, not only did you get guaranteed snipers up the top in the, sni the special sniper bins, but you also got the gold armor. Um, and, you know, back then it was, it was all about getting that gold armor, so you only had to burn a single cell to charge up your set. I think it was uh, Druid Esports, if I remember correctly. Thank you for the correction there, good sir. But Team Burger now looking to at least find a little bit more form moving forward. Immediately the contest versus Akuma, who's nearby onto Countdown. Beast of the Hunt gonna get piped here by way. And amazing lob. Energy Barrigan also gonna be there, but Akuma staying in cover for the time being. They have that conduit, they have that catalyst, and they can fortify for now. But the armor advantage is getting very clear here. Team Burger, they want to get in. Exactly, 75 in the, the favor of Team Burger here, who, as you can see, they put the energy barricade down to try and lock uh, Akuma in, the, in here. Will this be their graveyard? It kind of seems like it with all these nades rolling in right now, uh, trying to burn the wall as well to get past. Yeah, Pricey was in trouble there. The dark void for Kuma to actually move on forward, but counter frag nade. Philippaz kept at bay for the time being. The barricade will be answered by the energy barricade at least. But from this point on, it's just a standoff. Team Burger, they're really thinking about this fight, but there is consideration perhaps to get the hell out. They have reset though for the time being as Pricey has an off angle to work with. Yeah, honestly kind of incredible how this, uh, this fight sort of started in earnest and then we've had almost a complete reset. You were talking about the energy barricades there. With the way they work, you can essentially cancel your opponent's energy barricade if you put your own down. So it's one of those abilities where you kind of want to hold on to it if you know that the other team has a conduit because if you put yours down afterwards, uh, you kind of win out in that instance. And Akuma, it's difficult for them to get the hell out just because of the Bloodhound scans. Team Burger take two and they're looking to at least get the push going. Push comes to shove. Brute Force is the answer, but Way immediately down on the ground. That's two here for Akuma's advantage. Three gone from Team Burger, and they cannot get a slice of the action whatsoever. Very impressive fight win there from Akuma. As we noted, uh, a lot of utility used, but Akuma coming from behind with triple blues to take that out. Um, honestly, very well played. Congrats to them, but now they've got to deal with Final Start, who have just pulled up. Yeah, but it's not over here for Akuma as Countdown leading to potential destruction of squads yet again. Final start, keeping them inside yet again. It's a different direction Akuma's looking, but this time around, they're heading on out with confidence thanks to that extra biz armor. Rolling Thunder now to play the tree cleaner, also pushing forward to piece of the hunt. Spots a target in elevation after that grab as well. And it's high time here to go for the track. Kill a pause. Killed in action so far. Final start though, gonna get traded here by Crusader. And it's a two versus two now. Here we go, yet again. The lift is up here for Kang. 
to find these targets black hole also the play and here comes akuma yet again trying to fight on the high ground countdown still bleeding out here it's still all the chaos between akuma and final start but wanton dumpling they found opportunity and they're coming in knocking final start is gone akuma has one left standing and wanton dumpling they want it do they get it oh, the bin the bin's not enough and they will take it Oh, they'll wrap Akuma up in a tasty little package there and walk away with some KP. Unfortunately, those two just taking far too long to finish that off. Dancing around each other with those gravity lifts means that, uh, yeah, essentially neither of them come out in the victor. In the end, it really is the third party um, that gets all the joy there. Anyway, that's been a lot of action well outside the ring to start off world's edge for us here in game four but now we can move back over to the teams who have a chance of probably taking this out a little bit more you'd say the ones who are playing the circle the ones that are inside the ring um they're all the way up towards climatizer um it will finish ooh, actually maybe somewhere in between epicenter and climatizer we've even got some teams down towards overlook at the moment um who aren't too far outside it's one of those moments where I say, meanwhile, back in the ring, right? Full yeah. engaged, fully suppressed, in the corner, bang for fifth. Can he even get the hell out? That's a big question. As IBG crossing through the tunnels and moving forward as well. Beautiful arc star there from Dexter to catch out one. Full engaged in the meantime, eliminated after getting sandwiched there by MDY White and Legends Gaming. But as IBG is working their way through the tunnels, you got D4 nearby, you got X and Y also giving a little bit of chase here. And as it stands right now, they're, they're going to keep safe for the time being and balloon on up to get the elevation going. IBG, happy to sit always, you know, maybe just a little bit outside the ring. It's often getting back inside it um, as it's closing. That could be the issue for them. Certainly fighting other teams hasn't been an issue for them so far. They, I mean, you know, unless it is the worst of circumstances, they just always seem to come out on top. Ziki, Asia's, and Dexter are just honestly phenomenal uh, when it comes to team fighting. And I think it's just insane that they have such a big amount of kill points right now. 26 to 10 so far. Then you add wow. on one more after what Dexter just did there. The, the race is getting insane, man. Who needs to place when you just can kill everyone along the way? And because of it, right? They haven't won a single game yet here, Gino, but they're in the top three. They're second place. And only five points, or in this case, four points now away from Serenity. Yeah, I mean, that that is pretty nuts, right? Um, you know, Ziki, uh, as you said, 10 kills. Asia's leading the way on uh, that Horizon. who's almost got 4k damage so far going um, into today. So it's, yeah, it's a, a very impressive performance by those guys. As you can see, they're not even too far outside the ring this time. They can probably head up there and, and maybe take on Bear Claw Gaming if they like. I'm watching the left side though, and evac towers are a go as Wanton Dumpling and MDY Black need to head in towards the epicenter and flying by Lightning Unicorn as well as MXF scouting around with the crypto. So they know squads are dropping into epicenter. Does Wanton Dumpling force the issue? No, they don't. They have red armor, but not the best HP, so they'll stay away from MDY Black for the time being. So occupying the underside of epicenter here. SMG here. When you can set up here, it's probably not going to help them out very much. They don't know exactly where the circle is pulling, but, uh, you know, if they've got some experience in reading that, they should know it's probably not going to be anywhere within Epicenter. You just don't get circles that end uh, anywhere near the middle of that POI. I want the dumpling go back with the gas pedal. As soon as they reset, they go, 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 and they're going for broke immediately. Breaking shields as soon as possible. Boring here. Keeping the suppressing fire on. And Wanton Dumpling just getting in the way of anything MDY wants to do. Jackie Chan with the triple karate chop there. XZZ bringing the damage. And MDY Black is gone already. Oh, incredible pressure putting on, put on by Wanton Dumpling there. You can see not even waiting to like... Uh, for an opponent essentially just firing bullets into the doorway <laughs> and if anyone peeks they've met them as soon as that watson fence went down though they full sent it in the middle there um not waiting not wasting a second so okay the circle oh, okay it's it's very much pulled back towards climatizer uh the building on the hill there 
Ash Esports are in that at the moment, so they're actually in a very good spot. Lightning Unicorn, further up in Climatizer, are going to have to uh, probably make their way further in. They're going to gonna run into Keep Going Gaming, who are coming around on the bottom floor, and then Serenity on the top floor of that building. Man, Ash Esports, they're actually a team good at getting towards the zone, but the problem is when they get overrun. Speaking of, though, T4 also overrun yet again. Wanton Dumpling is hungry for more, and they can actually find these targets. The only one left, the Valkyrie inside the lava. Legends Gaming also a bit of action for them as well, keeping Iron Blood Gaming and MDI White at bay. So as Overlooks eliminated at this point, and T4 is left to a single rat. There's still a problem that everyone on the south side needs to deal with. Want on Dumpling, this team coming into this year, they're taking these fights so much smarter than before. Certainly feels like they've used their off season well. And skilled up. Having a look at the map on your screen. It has continued to pull towards Climatizer. LU playing in the middle, but they are a little bit in the open. Honestly, those teams in the building might be better. Uh, a better spot for a little while. Legends Gaming actually oh. getting worse off now as they take on MDY White. And they've tried to shove into that train car, but they haven't done it successfully. Yeah, they didn't notice MDY White really creeping into them, and now it's already two down here for Legends, confirming Strafing Flame, MDY White, picking their battles wisely, and it's a big reason why they got that clutch back in split two playoffs, keeping that fifth place, that's why they won that LCQ. Just the advantage taken by MDY White in that scenario, X and Y though also in trouble, Watson Dumpling has their number, and X and Y is booted away, Watson Dumpling, the servings are just keeping on going, who also wants to have a bit of a book? Hey here, Iron Blood Gaming, they also order up the same case. NKB so far for Wanton Dumpling. I am getting hungrier and hungrier the more kills they get. Uh, the hungrier they get the kills, it seems, honestly. Um, I'll have to refuel in between these series, but Wanton Dumpling, they're certainly not at risk of stopping any time soon. Going into this, they were in for, uh, fourth spot, 10 points off the pace. And they're going to be moving up the standings, I dare say, here after our first game on World's yeah. Edge. For Gugu and XCZ, even back in, if I remember correctly, World Not Fair, that was, this is their map that they can really go on a rampage whenever they find a path to work with. Legend's also going to be gone. Another kill goes the way of Wonton Dumpling. But while this happens, Iron Blood Gaming actually prioritizing moving into the zone here. They're contending with Serenity, keep going, as well as Lightning Unicorn, who's on the outskirts right now fortifying the way that they are accustomed to you can see lightning unicorn uh they've got one very uh you know they've got hard cover to their north and they're trying to create some to their south maybe even just blocking vision by putting so many damn fences out in front of them that uh people can't even see them to shoot the bullets through but i don't know how long that's gonna last honestly because there's quite a few teams um, all the way below, as you can see here, they're starting to push up. Teams like MXF actually taking the risky route across the lava. And do they know? God Hand, right above them. Oh no, God Hand also looking to be miners here. MXF, they do get the first down going. Confirm acquaintance along the way. And MXF, they threw themselves into the fire. They have to deal with the furnace now. Guess who's cooking? MXF trying to be the chef in this kitchen. Moving forward past the spikes and the XSJ in the front line. And the wingman shot will secure the position. God Hand is gone again. So I think God Hand were a duo coming into that fight. And they just saw someone crossing the lava and like, Well, hey, this is probably the best shot we're going to get. Why don't we just like have a crack at them? I don't know. I, I think maybe they could have found a better spot to rat it out there. That was a tough fight to take, even if it was a 2v3, honestly. So MXF probably happy with that decision. Now they get to, to crawl up onto the edge of that cliff. Um, even just EMPing. That was their MXF's EMP that they just threw into the building there, causing chaos for all of those Watson teams that were set up. And even more so, Bearclaw's gone thanks to MXF. We saw a while ago God Hand looking for gold, but apparently... It's MXF who gets those Threshers going and they like their spot right now. 
away from BK Gaming and the rest of these squads. Lightning Unicorn coming up close, but here we go now with the Rage Boss off the server. Wanton Dumpling has arrived towards the circle and they're moving in as soon as possible. F except though, they're not done. They're going after Lightning Unicorn first and foremost. They already got a single down. Got Shaq you to the floor. Lightning Unicorn is crumbling as we speak as MXF are showing up now. It's a shame LU had found a better spot there, but they do get shoved out of it by our crypto team MXF. I mean, IBG probably happy with those cryptos in the lobby because it makes their job a lot easier. They don't have to shoot out the fences. They can let another team deal with that for them. Uh, what on Dumpling? Honestly, at this point, 12 kills. They don't need to do anything more. They oh, can oh. just sit here and take this position. Oh, those kills just keep going their way. 47 points, first place now. And with six squads remaining, it still wants on Dumpling keeping the pressure on. But the Labyrinth defenses await them. Lullabang, the only one surviving here for Lightning Unicorn, trying to be the rat along the way. But these 30 30 shots are sublime from Boring. Nades also love. And wants on Dumpling will take the black hole as a signal to go. Casa to the floor. BK is in trouble. Lightning Unicorn, they've been found and they've been sniffed out. But this is Still VK absolutely hurting. Watts on Dumpling, they don't care who contends against them. Whether it be VK, whether it be MXF, whether it be Serenity, they will fight against all of them. So much presence to Wanton Dumpling show that all the other three teams are shoved into a single corner while they command about 80% of the space in this final ring. They're actually running pretty low on ammo, some of them. Um, but do they have just a few clips left to deal with these last three teams? Iron Blood Gaming, I mean, they've got seven kills so far, but somehow that pales in comparison to the carnage that Wonton Dumpling have wrought throughout Game 4. Yeah, IBG's playing very patient just because Serenity's above them. They're waiting for Serenity to drop first and foremost, prioritizing the elevated target. But the Dark Veil now in the play. IBG moving forward, MXF nearby as well. And IBG will run into Wonton Dumpling. Unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Only one can win in a battle of heavyweights. And it's Wonton Dumpling in command yet again. Dexter now is gone from this fight. Wonton Dumpling given a chance to go for a reset. And while this happens, Serenity, they're behind. The wall, IBG getting cut. It's only Sticky, the only one still standing. But Serenity has an their own fight here onto the floor. M except for Serenity, IBG being hunted by Wanton Dumpling, and Serenity's just keeping distance from the other side. IBG goes down first out of those four teams, but Serenity and MXF have played this a little bit slower. MXF currently on the low ground. EMP is ready to go. I think uh, Asaren is about to pop that. Serenity have tried to wait as long as possible to allow the other teams to do the damage, but now it is time. Could Wanton Dumpling uh, finish this off with even more kills and maybe even a win? Or will it be Serenity? They've been piling onto the score line and now they're going for as soon as possible. A reset here. They get the shields from the conduit. They already knocked down Jesco and Boogie along the way as MXF will chip in. And it's MXF instead looking to find that opportunity. Wingman in the hands of NBX. Here comes the missiles as well. But Wanton Dumpling in the front line now. Wanton Dumpling keep on winning. And Wanton Dumpling will take this one. An incredible game to kick off World's Edge here. What? It was just absolutely insane. We just had game number four and our first game on World's Edge. So, you know what? Generally, you can see teams perform a little differently. Uh, you know, sometimes the teams in the lower brackets push their way to the top. Um, but, you know, I feel like our higher placing teams, Genome, they're consistently performing today. Hey, Shora, uh, I mean, I, I don't think any team can show consistency at the level of damage that Wanton Dumpling put out in that game. That is, That was a singular effort by the Chinese crew. Uh, we know they've had firepower before. It was one of the first weeks that they ever showed up in APAC South, um, you know, where we saw Gugu and the likes just doing incredible amounts of damage, uh, even to the best players and the best teams in our region and once again we are seeing glimpses of that potential here i mean when we finally get to that scoreboard and see how many kills and how much mm. damage these three did 
Uh, it's going to be one of the most sickening numbers you, you've ever seen on a stats line. Yeah, you know, we've been talking a lot about Iron Blood Gaming and how, you know, they absolutely like to play an aggressive play style and take some kills along with them. But I feel like Wonton Dumpling at the moment are going to give them a bit of the run for their money. Wonton, you know, took out 14 kills in match three. And then we could see, you know, when we have a look at the, the scoreboard, um, I believe one player actually had 10, so they're going to really bring the skills and spices for us today. Um, but, you know, right at the end there, uh, as we see a couple of our high-hitting teams perform, I want to take a quick touch on MXF. I feel like they had a little bit of a turn of events uh, coming into game number four. You know, they had a bit of a spider web of Watson fences positioning themselves quite well in between these crazy teams. Yeah, I mean, MXF's uh, style has been quite interesting so far. Um, I'll look, I'll, I'll tell you about that in just a second as we stop and we appreciate oh. one of the best games of Apex Legends ever seen in a pro league setting. One of the best games ever. 23 kills. This isn't... Pro League qualifiers, this isn't some low-level lobby here, Lace. This is, aside from LAN, the best it gets. And Wonton Dumpling have put down 23 kills and almost 8,000 damage. More than 2k per player. More than 5 kills per player. 23 kills. My, I tip my hats to these guys. That is just phenomenal you kind of just get a little bit speechless you know the team uh, has great cohesion and they're all kind of performing across the board which when we have a look at the overall scoreboard you can see why they're at the top at the moment wanton dumpling with a total of 66 points but you know let's take a look at you know a wrap-up of the four games and the kill points there genome 44 that's just insane plays by them I, it's Mainly almost double, um, you know, what Serenity is doing, but they're coming in with a bit of a placement points, which brings them in obviously second there. But, you know, our hard hitting team, Iron Blood Gaming at 33 there. But what sort of just 11 in front of them, Gino? Yeah, I mean, obviously they've just pumped up uh, their numbers pretty insanely with that, uh, with that effort. I mean, that was what, a 35 point game uh, if, if they got 23 kills, uh, which is, you, you can't really do much more than that. Yeah, and you know you, we you just can't. You you just it, it you just see these teams sort of start out in the beginning, and you know they're kind of getting a little bit slowly, and they just build up the the energy and the momentum. You know, generally, I know as us as casters, we get a little tired when it comes to the end, but these guys <laughs> seem to be just amping it up. Um, but the action doesn't stop there. We're going to take a short break, everybody, and we'll see you back soon for game number five.
Sorry. I gotta admit, I may have tricked you. Whew. Glad I got that off my chest. Tell Death I said hello. I may have dropped her. Welcome back, everybody. We are showcasing the talent we have in APAC South. This is A versus CG Gnome. We've seen some heavy hitters uh, and, you know, some damage stats that are just out of this world. Um, mm. I, I'm just a little bit in shock, the performance that each team is doing. But, you know what, we do have some players um, that are performing extremely well. Okay, well, here's a, here's a matchup between Ziki from uh, IBG and Gugu from Wonton Dumpling. 22 kills already for Gugu is, I again, I cannot stress this enough how ridiculous that is. 13 for Ziki is an amazing performance. 22 after four games is disgusting. That is like, uh, I, I think at one point <laughs> last year, Lace, I was going through and trying to work out how many players Mm -hmm. uh, had dropped 20 kills by themselves in a series, and it was not that many. I don't know if anyone ever managed to get 20 kills in four games. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, I, I kind of wanted to see a little bit of like a, a 20 bombs and stuff like that, and Gugu just, uh, I yeah. think, was listening. I didn't give the caster's curse. It's actually happening, you know, in front of us. Um, you know, yeah. like you said, they're, they're picking up kills a little bit later in the couple of matches, like uh, the wonton dumpling when they first started you know they, they were about i think it was sixth place with seven kills you know that is still an exceptional feat there but um yeah. then second round was 17th so and they didn't really pick up anything and then just out of the bag round three they just flipped a switch um and that's when they came in with you know the, the 14 kills and they're just picking it up from here and to even compare that with ibg right because ibg were doing the same thing you know racking up uh, insane amounts of kills early in the game, but then very rarely finishing, uh, you know, even in the top five. Um, so the fact that Wanted Dumpling could come through with that many kills, but then also win that final circle where, like, there were two fully prepped other teams uh, and they were fighting the entire time. They weren't the last one to come in and kind of third party that. Oh my god, that's just. It's yeah. just levels. It's levels like, above. like a snowball effect, you know? They just keep rolling and rolling, like, no matter what team is sort of rotated or set themselves yeah. up. You know, like I said, I saw MXF sort of have a nice mm. position already, but the snowball effect from Wonton Dumpling is just too strong for these teams that are just solidifying themselves there. Um, and, the, the, you know, the thing I really love about World's Edge um, is, you know, we have some legend changes. You know, Catalyst was a major pick on Storm Point. Um, and, but when you hit World's Edge, you do see, you know, like MXF, a few more Watson teams seem to get that higher pick rate. Uh, there's just something about World's Edge that I feel like makes these teams feel at home. And you are ready and ready to go. This is game number five, World's Edge. Here we are yet again. Will we continue on with the Wonton Dumpling Show? Or will we get other contenders to their crown so far? Welcome back to World's Edge. It's game number two out of three on World's Edge. It's game number five between Group A and C. And we are watching history being made by Wonton Dumpling. 66 points right now here, Gene Gnome. 22 kills for Goo Goo alone. And honestly... We have a saying here in the PH, man. Get that 30 bro, because it is possible for Gugu Goo Goo in two maps. <laughs> it is. I I'm not sure anyone's got 30 in a series before. Actually, I'm. I am so keen to just like dig through the archives and uh, have a look at those stats uh, at some point after this series. Because man, that'll be fun to see um, if that is a new record here that Gugu Goo Goo is trying to set. Because to be clear, by himself, he has more kills than. Everyone else in the server, apart from Serenity and Iron Blood Gaming. I mean, like, as in personally, he has kills, uh, more kills than 17 of the other teams. 
it's, it's just crazy to think, right? In that top five, it's Gugu as well as Jackie Chan or XCZ. In the top three, the only contenders right now are RBG's Asia and Ziki alongside Legacy, who in Serenity had a good run so far. And Serenity is still in a good spot. Number two, only to want on Dumpling. But it's time for us to talk about the ring here, Genome. Center pull and straight into perhaps a monument and the like moving forward. What will we get here? We saw how Boogie Borders took a god spot last week on the outskirts yeah. of Monument. Can we see another team do so here? Yeah, so it looks like it could be one of those rings that pulls into, I'm, I'm going to call it like the pocket, right? It's this pocket yeah. that's below uh, to the southwest of Monument, um, just outside the train tunnels. And, you know, sometimes it'll pull, like we saw in that Boogie Borders game, uh, a bit more up to the north, and you have teams pushing through from the sort of landslide chokes and coming down there, and then sometimes it'll pull down to the caravans. Um, closer to the lava river that you see right in front of you there. Perfect timing from our observers um, as we see Legends Gaming flying over. So it'll it'll be interesting, um, because especially because you can't really play those positions that well early from the start. So most teams have to uh, find a, a spot in one of the fragment buildings uh, or the monument buildings and then work their way, way over. So it's a sort of, it's a, a multi-phase um, sort of rotation there throughout the game. Yeah, it starts as urban warfare, right? Two garrisons poking at each other, trying to kill those two kills up. But full engage! They're facing off against the squad already, and it's Lightning Unicorn landing on them immediately. A trade, though. It's now 2v2 for a time being. Oh no, that's the Watson already gone, and full engage. What else can Pang Papa Fifth? do at this point on. The names have been longer than the lives that they've had here so far, your genome. And Lightning the Unicorn, they lose Lala Bang right now as well, so it's not the best engage for them. Hey, oh, they get the reset. Yeah, can they get him back up in time? Um, you know, full engage, trying to get their reset on at the same time exactly. So I think both teams may actually just end up coexisting. It's possible here. Lala Bang, though, he's, he's thrown out the EMP immediately. And oh wow, they, did he get re knocked? No, I think they actually got off the res there because they were resing Kizix and they were like about half a second away from uh, from completing that. And he's uh, he's still on the floor, so I guess they're gonna try it again. There goes uh, Bang Papa. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I feel like we need to take a quiz every time we look at full engage. The names Bang Papa Fib. We got <laughs> Jub Jibib. I already messed that up a while ago, and at least Kizix makes it simple. But we're not done with the action. Keeping an eye out though for Overlook Entertainment. Do you think that's like lava siphon? Do you think that's like one of the uh, one of the requirements though to join the team is like you just have yeah. to have a really stupid sounding name. <laughs> no, th those names are great. Come on, the great and amazing Jub. See, I already remembered it after after a while. Okay, so maybe if you're a wizard instead of an Apex yep. player is what you're going yeah. for. Okay, yeah, Pretty sure. Much. Okay, they spell cast with the words that they weave in Legends Gaming. We, we've seen them have some struggles so far. I think really the biggest concern right now for Legends is they're getting outpaced by some of these edge teams when they try to rotate. They're caught instead by other squads playing the zone. Keep going gaming. Another team we want to watch out for after that first game a while ago and that win. Taking after MXF, Overlook Entertainment also nearby. And this could be a big scuffle now coming our way. Yeah, they're running into the remaining members of MXF and they will go down. So sad to see those guys not make it through there. Uh, you know, Lace was just talking before about their interesting play style, and I actually kind of like it, right? You know, they're often uh, playing with the Valkyrie there, uh, playing Valkyrie, Watson, Crypto, and it means they're often found actually very good spots in the zones with those early rotate. And of course, now that Valkyrie is less picked, uh, you know, sure, you can get some places with the evac, but sometimes that extra height uh, and extra range that you get with this guy with Dive uh, will actually... Um, help you out a little bit more versus those other teams. So it's interesting that MXF has managed to capitalize on that difference. And it's also something you don't need to rely on RNG on in the spawn. Bearclaw Gaming, though, he's in trouble as rude. They try to smoke on that, but that's IBG, and they already know they will hunt you down and kill you. The guys there might just be the last sight that the opponents can see. Bearclaw Gaming. It's only natural that they get hunted down by IBG right now. The true predators of this stage so far. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of hungry beasts running around uh, both Stormpoint and Worlds Edge, and as you say, IBG definitely one of them. They actually get a Prowler as well to help them out here. 
Oh, where's the Digi gone? Someone else does. Zicky, come on, bro. I mean, okay. All right, all right. He's the Bangalore. It's fine. You give the Digi over to the Bangalore. It just, it just hurts me to see the Prowler with a, with a HCOG on it, you know? Yeah, you know, fake red, fake red. Not the real red experience, man. <laughs> Come on, give him the Digitrat back. But already the ring pulling actually to the eastern side, moving closer to Fragment rather than the usual countdown spot, or rather the usual monument spot that we saw from last week. So it seems like Serenity, they're going to be keeping an eye out from the high ground, away from all the buildings. You got VK, you got MDI White, and of course for Legends Gaming, this is going to be a sigh of relief moving forward. Yeah, you can see it's actually shifting uh, very much on top of the building. So I'm wondering if that means it'll actually go further down um, towards Serenity, who were playing uh, down to the south there, who actually just managed to get a down onto Jack Q. Team Burger, of course, one of our favorites. Uh, not uh, probably their favorite day of ALGS. They've ever played, though, honestly, as they're sitting in 12th spot here with uh, measly 15 points at this point. Uh, obviously, they've made the, the change today from uh, Shady over to Sharky, and a lot of people were really excited to see one of the most decorated uh, players from Apex South make his return here, but it has been uh, uh, a lackluster one so far. Yeah. It's been tough for Team Burger as Lightning Unicorn is just feasted on by many, many teams around them. You saw Serenity taking down one. You saw as well MD White, I believe, shipping on in. Speaking of MD White, it's MD White here. Very safe. MD Black might be the ones in trouble on the other side. I guess my concern right now for Team Burger here, Genome, is you, you saw even last week that yes, they have a lot of potential firepower. They have incredible legacies with the players. But it took them so long to get really heated up. It took them map 5, map 6 to really have an impact into the server. And it might be the same case right now even with the new player in the roster. Yeah, well, it is interesting because uh, it feels like they're playing a style that's very different to what a lot of them have succeeded on during their careers, right, Dax? When you think about yeah. Pricey playing on Moist or Sharky playing uh, with Reignite back in the day, um, you know, maybe Reignite were a little more aggressive than uh, than Moist, the Hyper Rotate team, but um, they still played zone as much as they could when possible. We are rarely seeing Team Burger inside the zone. They are very much... Um, seem Ooh, sorry, seemingly playing an edge style so far, and it's, yeah, they're just struggling to make it work, similarly to how Dreamfire was struggling to do that um, last week. It feels like to other teams, like Wonton Dumpling or IBG, have a better feed on how to play that new brand of aggressive Apex that is working for them here in year four. Yeah, exactly, right? That's what I'm thinking about right now. Some of the legacy plays, they just don't work anymore as much as they would like. And instead, we look to teams like Wonton Dumbling, who's ready to just bulldoze Akuma here by the tunnels if ever they find that contact. Wonton Dumbling, they need to get in there sooner or later. And Jackie Chan, yet again, here comes XCC going into the front line. Always exciting when Wonton Dumpling is nearby an enemy squad, but they're not getting the contact as of yet. Let's they don't have a blood hand here, so they don't have that scan legend al uh, alongside them. But Akuma, they're just hiding inside right now. They're really staying away from this potential contact here. Yeah, obviously different approaches to how they do play this aggressively. Conduit, not a bad option, as you can oh. see in here. Jackie Chan making the vault work. Akuma, they tried to go for an Avengers Assemble play, and they did show on up, but once on Dumpling instead, trying to pick them apart. One down though here as Boring's on the floor. Jackie Chan trying to confirm these kills, thirsting the opposition as much as possible, and Akuma will survive with Yukoi to tell that tale. So that's pretty much it. Akuma trying to get the hell out. Can Yukoi strafe away from those bullets, sliding over into the snow to stay alive? Wants on Dumpling, they'll reset for now, but they want that final PK along the way. I mean, God, this team has so much confidence right now. After that last game, how can you take them on? How can you make them, uh, you know, they're just going to have so much belief in themselves and how good they are right now. Um, look, either way, the circle does continue to shift and it will be uh, sort of what I was hinting at before. It's going very much south, uh, but it was to the position that uh, Serenity were playing. They've actually moved up a little bit further onto the train tracks, um, and there will be some of the most southernmost buildings still in. Not this one that we're having a look at with uh, 
uh, Legends Gaming, you know, streamer building, that's not going to be in play. It's going to go further down that, and uh, we're going to see some other teams like, yeah, so KPG and Overlooked. Uh, whoever wins this fight will actually have a very good spot towards the south of the zone. Yeah, especially with Serenity giving up the Cliffs a while ago, potential god spot in front of Keep Going Gaming and Overlook. That's one of Dark Fail already. Standoff now as Overlook is poking here with the scout. Big C now pushing forward alongside Surprise Z. And to get the close contact going versus Keep Going Gaming. But the problem is that Elevation is still going to be a problem. And then you barricade available here for Big C. But immediately we get the artillery from the Bangalore to respond. Overlook and Steven. They're stuck here for the time being. Keep going gaming. They also have the Kraber looking to find the shot. Oh. We're watching KH hit a nasty one. And it's time for Keep Going Gaming to take the fight into their own hands. VC already gone to the hands of Bible. Advantage here for Keep Going Gaming. And they're just keeping Overlooked away as much as possible. The ring will do the dirty work along the way. Exactly. Overlook, they kind of look behind them as if they've got an option to retreat. They do not. They have to go forward or win this game. And surprise, he actually tries to do so below the lava. Actually makes it out. He's, he's by himself right below K, uh, KPG right now. Um, as you said, they thought the Bangalore ult might be able to help them there. But no, uh, because KH already had the interceptor pylon set up. That, of course, eats up all those missiles that Bangalore drops on you. And at that point, KPG really had a hold on that fight with the height advantage, and they will take it out. I think they've just worked out where Surprise he is. Yeah, yep. um, it's actually going to be boring, um, adding to his stats. And instead of finding the last member of Akuma, they find the last member of Overlook. What is up with the past few weeks with all of these rats playing rock and stone along the way near the lava? But once on Dumpling, they've gotten out of the tunnel. The only problem for them this time around is they're only a duo. We're keeping an eye out also on the other side. You got T4 all the way towards the north where MDY Black, Team Burger, God Hand are also along along them. So I guess it's really that rotation moving into mm. the next ring, right? VK Gaming, Ooh. they have a good spot, and MDY White wants a piece of it. And you can already see Team Burger taking the stream we're building at Legends Gaming has already evacuated from. Yeah, we're actually getting a respawn in as well. So Wonton Dumpling have managed to find themselves a Moby Res and get back to full strength. No one nearby uh, really to stop that happening or jump on them as they do. Team Burger. As you said, uh, occupying the same building as Legends Gaming, who have actually lost Easy Flash here. Yeah. Here we go again for Legends Gaming. They're trying to transit, and they're caught immediately with one going down. Player K's those beautiful arcs are way now with a slide on in, but Kassa instead chipping in to help out Legends in the pitch. So BK wants to peep the action. It's all left to pricing out the stand by his lonesome. The energy barricades are keeping him alive for the time being. As of safety to work with. Try to break through the shield, gets the banner going. He's looking for the armor swap into the purples. He goes, and at least endurance is the name of the game here for Team Burger. But the wrap around to try and find an off angle here versus Legends Gaming. While this happens, here comes Wanton Dumpling back as a trio. The Bloodhound is an easy target. That's good by the Kizix already. Full engage, gonna be gone for the time being. But MDY is still ready for even more action. Wanton Dumpling now in trouble. This time around, they're gonna get caught. And this time around, they're going to get eliminated. We'll let the same happen to Team Burger as Pricey survives for the time being. Oh, man. Pricey there. Just, like, wall jumping out to his heart's content. Trying to find those angles. God, he's a fun player to watch. Uh, <laughs> if anyone had a chance to clutch that out, it was him. Um, but Legends do actually stabilize a little bit with two of them left alive. Uh, which is, I guess, better uh, than just Pricey by himself. So, a couple of teams there limping into our next zone, zone 5. Meanwhile, IBG have actually got a power position down to the south on the opposite side to KPG. As you can see, the south side of the zone is where you want to be right now. Those teams up in the north going to find a bit of a crush in the next 30 seconds. Yeah, Serenity in the meantime might be keeping themselves after repositioning, but they also wanted a piece of the action that we're seeing towards the north side. God Hand has decided to reign supreme, and Ash Esports is left to a single rat. Legends Gaming also gone now. VKG, that hand that fed you a while ago, that will be the hand that will slap you away. And VK Gaming, they've gotten good value with things like the triple take. Can they stay alive now? A Kraber in the hands of Xiao Kai. Here comes the Peacekeeper now, ready to 
do a bit more damage. EMP though online. BK Gaming will be in trouble here and now as MDY White will take advantage of the situation. Team Burger also gone from this conflict. Uh, can't rat it out any further. I am Blood Gaming and they want to show that they are the real threat in this lobby. Can they get on top of Wonton Dumpling? I've got a position oh, to capitalize here, I think, potentially, nice. Yeah, BK Gaming stuck into the corner. The rocks will be no cover whatsoever. And BK Gaming, they got hit by the EMP. And they're hit by the full force of MDY White. Ash also removed now. That rat towards the north has been sniffed out. And the only one staying alive as a rat is Akuma. But we get a clash here between T4 and Serenity. Trying to cross through the train tax. Do you even have a ticket here, good sir? As T4 cannot get any transit going. Five left as we go for even more. MDY White, they've just got a tiny little bit of pipe on the edge here to crawl in, but as soon as the zone pushes them out of it, they run into serious trouble. That's Iron Blood Gaming firing down at them from above, but also Serenity having a look from the west as well. They'll come out on top. Oh, Legacy, he's up. They should be able to find a smoke here and get Bugi back up and running. At that point, they could be looking good, but... Kraber, Watch. looking for this oh. from above, he hits the shot, KH, maybe even a potential to get a collat here. They hit the shot, but MDY White gonna get eliminated along the way. Keep going, gaming, they have elevation, but IBG might have the god spot to watch out for. And these Kraber bullets are gonna be very important. Moving forward, Legacy, he's just trying to survive right now as his teammates are on the floor, but there's just no real cover to oh work my with god. now. Armor swap to stay alive, IBG, they're thinking about it, they wanna push on in and get this kill secured, but keep going, gaming instead, gonna be the contender. Full squad versus full squad now as KH mobilizing to find an angle still has a Kraber though <laughs> legacy's gone serenity will be eliminated and we get full versus full here comes IPG oh no barely any bullets left in the chamber there from KH he was really relying on that Kraber to get the damage done now that they finished off serenity it's though it's IBG yeah. Hit that box, find a new gun, and a prowler is at least a worthwhile weapon to utilize. But Ziggy taking advantage of the situation, they're going after KH first and foremost. And the IBG sliding on down, Aegis Doe to the floor. It's a one for one yet again, and this has been a strong spot for Lan with the 30 30 dropping down to contend yet again. The massive shots try to trap these targets, and Ziggy using his own teammate as a shield ball. Push comes to shove, and IBG look to capitalize on that fact. Smokes out, here comes the forced issue, and Iron Blood Gaming will take this one. And welcome back, everyone. Nothing short of amazing. Those teams were absolutely incredible. That was just action-packed. I'm literally sitting here with my mouth open, Dax. I was just like, I just... Uh wasn't even ready for that you know we had just hit finished number game number five as we're wrapping up we're very close to f finishing off our groups a and c i know we're itching to get to the end here um dax how do you feel about that i i, I got to touch on you know iron blood gaming we're racking up the points we've talked about them we've seen it but they finally solidified a win yeah, I think that was the most, I'd say, responsible game IBG has had so far. And this is what separates IBG from the rest of these edge teams that love to go for the full send. You saw Watson Dumpling, they got six kills, yes, but they were caught out so early on in the rotation and they only made it to 14th place. On the other hand, IBG keeping tabs of so many of the other teams nearby. They watched out for MDY White, who played from the building. They kept an eye out for Serenity towards the train track. And they made sure they weren't tempted to actually push Serenity and seed all of that high to keep going gaming. Yes, there was damage from KPG, especially you saw it land there with some nutty 33 shots. But as soon as KH ran out of those Kraber bullets and went for a death box to get a new gun, that was the signal for IVG. And we've seen them be so good at these kind of 1v1. Sticky's good for it. He's always a clutch master for IVG. And he provides another one yet again for his team.
Exactly right. You know, MDY White were actually performing quite well. Um, you know, they they kind of had to stop Wonton Dumpling in their tracks, which then opened up the gateway for Iron Blood Gaming to take the win with 11 kills. Dax, it's just insane that this team is still performing even into match number five. Um, what a touch on also Keep Going Gaming. You know, they uh, took out a win in the first round. So, you know, they are coming back for blood. Yeah, I think for Keep Going Gaming, they won some very important fights along the way in this game. One against, I believe, MXF when they got them to get basically cornered by another squad. That win over versus Overlook Entertainment to play for the Southwest God spot in that ring. And just because of that, you can see Keep Going Gaming, they're still around that top five. But the contenders to the win for today, Lace. Wanton Dumpling still keep a lead, but narrowly two points separates them and IBG. That's it. You wonder if Wonton Dumpling are just going to, you know, do the heavy hitting and take out the kills or maybe place, uh, you know, in, in the top couple of squads because they are only two points ahead of Iron Blood Gaming. Iron Blood Gaming, you know, are known to absolutely just obliterated the rotating team. So they're just itching behind there. They're very close. It could be anybody uh, as we go into game number six. You know, we've had so much action from, you know, these heavy hitting games uh, th from these players, sorry. So we... We just want to see a little bit more in game number six. How do you feel? Do you feel like they're going to just steamroll again or play a little bit smarter? I feel like it's just going to be a showdown between Wanton and IBG, truthfully. From what we've seen so far, if you notice, Lace, the top three have more kill points rather than placement points. Edge gameplay has reigned supreme so far. That's what Group C brings to the table. And I can't wait to see who has the better shot to finalize this A versus C matchup. Exactly right. You know, we are hitting A versus C. We haven't had C uh, perform until today, and they are performing. But we are going to take ourselves a little short break. You guys get some snacks. Get ready as we wrap up game number five in preparation for game number six. See you soon. Surprise. And welcome back, everybody. We, we have showed you exactly 
what this region is made of here in Apex South. Um, Dax, it's been nothing but short of amazing games from match one to us finally going into match six for groups A versus C. You know, we have teams from Australia, Singapore, plus more. Our two heavy hitting teams that have been showing you their skills today are Thailand team, uh, which is Iron Blood Gaming, and our China team, Wonton Dumpling. Dax, how are you feeling? We are finally itching into game number six. I'm just excited to see what they're about to bring us. They're, they're really trying to face off against each other. IBG versus Wonton Dumpling. It's really been a set showdown by this point. Because it took a while. I think we saw in the break as well, Wonton Dumpling, they really had a tough second game. But moving into map three, and then that eventual win into map number four, it was their victory, and they racked up incredible points. Same could be said by IBG. IBG. They struggled at the very start. They were caught in that rotation, moving to the eastern side of Storm Point. But when it came down to it, they would hit those kills, get some incredible plays, courtesy of the likes of Ziki. And right now, it really feels feels like it's a penultimate showdown coming our way between those two teams. Yeah, exactly right. You know, once on Dumpling are out in front, uh, only by a couple of points though, Dax. So, you know, it is still toe-to-toe -to -toe with IBG and Want on Dumpling. Want on Dumpling, you know, round four, bringing out what is an exceptional 23 kills. Um, so, you know, there, there's still more that they have in the bag here. But why don't you take us through some of our top uh, fragging players in and amongst these amazing teams? I mean, Legacy has been quite a pain throughout this whole run so far, even though Serenity kind of has fallen off in terms of the immense impact into the lobby. Legacy has always been a thorn in anyone's side. Sniping targets, picking kills away from other teams. And you got XZZ, of course, or Jackie Chan, as everyone loves to call him now. <laughs> Gugu right behind them. It's a terrific duo that has been the backbone of Wonton Dumpling for years now. And we're really getting it here in ALGS Year 4. Whenever Wonton Dumpling, or whatever team they were last year, once they get heated up, they become a force to be reckoned with, and it's really up to teams to catch them as early as possible to prevent what has happened so far. Yeah, we were looking at the previous game, you know, um, uh, MDY White sort of knowing that, you know, Wonton Dumpling kind of needed to be stopped in their tracks, and that's exactly what they did. You know, we might see some of these smart plays coming into game number six just to sort of stop them there. But, you know, Iron Blood Gaming, like I said, someone's got to stop them as well because they are very close to taking out um, this week here. So, you know, it's only got a time will tell, but I'm very excited um, for game number six. You know, it's it's coming to the end of A versus C. We still have the one more game sort of hitting us now. Um, do you reckon anybody might swap up some legend picks? Do you feel like anybody's going to change their tactics? You know, when it comes to the final game, sometimes you'll see some teams changing a little bit of their play styles or meta. I mean, I'm just looking around if we're still going to get something like the Wraith. Will we get something like a random Revenant out of nowhere? Those are considerations yes. right now since it's the last map anyway. Yes, and I'll cut you right there. We're about to head into game number six. Let's fire away. Let's get this started. It's Wonton Dumpling and IBG going head to head. Thing is, I was here at the dropship looking around on who's actually gonna be dropping into World's Edge. And here we go again, Genom. Last map of a certain map, or last round round of a certain map, right? We get final start. They're gonna play that Revenant on Tree Cleaner. They got also the Bloodhound, so these guys will just hold W and look to fight anyone. Anyone they, they see. Yeah, I mean, we've actually had five teams changing up their legend composition going into this final game, Dax. That is quite a lot in the lobby. Um, very interesting here. As you can see, Tree Cleaner started off with uh, not only uh, the Revenant. Might be bringing out those forged shadows sooner rather than later, but also got a purple shield to go all with it. So... Yeah. I mean, MDY Black, they still have that rate for Shaman. We've seen actually MDY Black try to utilize that a lot back in that last map where they find places to play the portal, poke out teams like Wants on Dumpling. We've also noted here from Prod that the Mad Maggie is online, so apparently Lace is going to play this game today. <laughs> and, and with none other. 
been strafing flame at the helm as well. So Let Legends Gaming have switched over to Mad Maggie, Bangalore Watson. Oh, a... Such an interesting pick here for Legends, and I guess it just goes back to the fact that we've seen them multiple times caught in the crossfire in mid rotation. Perhaps them now going for the engage, playing a little bit more of the black hand s style that we've seen from before, before that whole finals run when they made those kind of switches give a chance to actually contend with the likes of Wonton as well as IBG because we know Legends Gaming are incredible shots that triple M and K threat that the whole world saw from last year. We haven't seen it as much in their home region. Yeah, look, not quite as much. And, you know, why is that? It's, uh, it's honestly hard to say. I think one of the big reasons is probably um, that the finals lobbies at LAN are just so tight. Um, that if you can find good spots, if, you know, for instance, you're playing landslide like they were at champs, um, the the hard rotates I feel like do get uh, rewarded quite a bit, and maybe in some of the chaos we see here in Apex South, not quite as much, and that is uh, that that's translated to Legends Gaming doing well, uh, but you know not as well as we've seen at really the highest level. Ooh. And why you see impressive. Already catching one on out, X and Y. <laughs> on Can't the even land. Can't even land, man. And the death box instead will bounce on the floor. So X and Y. No, they'll pick up the KPS, but that is probably one of the most unfortunate deaths I've seen in a while. I just loved how you could see him creeping like he was really scared of getting launched into the air <laughs> uh, himself by the geyser and then becoming the next casualty. <sighs> Unlucky. In any case, uh, let's talk about the ring as we usually do. And it's pretty similar to what we saw in the last game here, Genome. A little bit more southern compared to the ring itself a while ago. You get a little bit of Harvester, a little bit of the compounds above Lava Siphon. But yeah. beyond that, these teams can go back to playing the buildings here by Fragment as soon as they want to. Yeah, which is very interesting because I feel that like that almost makes it a 50-50 here between uh, either ending essentially exactly where it did last game um, in the pocket below uh, Fragment East here. But, or, you know, maybe there's a small chance, I wouldn't bet on it though, that it goes down towards uh, uh, Budget Fissure. Oh, sorry, Budget <laughs> Siphon. Um, that's what I meant to say there. Uh, and yeah, there's a potential it goes to that, that, that north spot. So... I don't know, we'll see. A um, couple of teams on either side there. And uh, it could be run it back. Might be a little bit different. I mean, place your bets here. MDY White, they're saying go back to a building that worked for us last game. On the other hand, MDY Black taking a different approach and playing into the campsite that you mentioned. Akuma also nearby. VK Gaming ready to play Gatekeeper at the moment's notice. But we're watching Ash Esports as well. Trying to just stay alive. They set up the pylon already. And we've seen from Ash, it's really just been a consistent game of zone for them. But unfortunately, they haven't had the best outlook when it comes to teams co running into them. No, Ash, uh, as you say, it feels like their game plan is solid. Um, but, you know, this is an FPS at the end of the day. And you've you got to win you once, <laughs> Dax. And it feels like Ash have rarely been able to perform on that level the macro is on point the micro needs a significant amount of work when you are dealing with some of the most dangerous you know m and k warlords in the game yeah welcome to apex south and you have to be able to hit those beams when it matters speaking of ash they're contending with god hand and mdy white t4 on the other hand a different plan as mdy black is the one scouting them out with a drone so Budget Siphon, it's gonna have many a team on it, Overlook Entertainment as well. One of the teams that we've seen play a different kind of priority so far in this server. They're betting on playing all the way to the south of the ring pool at this point. VK Gaming nicely set up on the hill. 30 seconds until we get that next set of ring information, uh, which will probably give us a good indication of uh you know where along that 50 50 split we were talking about this next ring will end up i mean this is i guess we should also mention the sixth map right so yep. uh you've got teams fighting it out here and you know who is going to walk away with those 25 split points for coming out on top of this lobby 
we are pretty close to finding that out now. It seems like it's very much between uh, Wonton Dumpling and Iron Blood Gaming, but Serenity have had, uh, honestly, a very good game to back up. You've got to remember, they played as a duo uh, out of very unfortunate circumstances uh, the first week, so they're looking for this kind of comeback and uh, potentially could get it here today, starting out at 67 points, just six off um, the lead there coming into game six. Yeah, they only need three to make it to the top three so far. They're still in contention for that top spot. If Keep Going Gaming also has a monstrous game, then they can actually snatch the wave, but the odds aren't looking likely in their favor. Keeping an eye out though, X and Y, they knock on Overlook's entertainment uh, doorstep. Overlook tells them to screw off, not right now, and they're even gonna answer with the rolling thunder to keep X and Y at bay here. X and Y. Spotting out some teams. We're going to see a lot of uh, similar sort of vibes from last game, Dax, uh, because this circle is so similar. And that means, of course, Wonton Dumpling um, coming from this similar position. KPG are also in that spot. But Lightning Unicorn are getting sent right now. Uh, they're hiding inside the caravan, and it looks like they're honestly kind of fearing for their lives, which I would be too if Wonton Dumpling was running at me. I mean, it's the same rotation path for once on Dumpling, but we're watching X and Y right now in Overlook Entertainment yet again clashing against each other. Seems like Wonton though has already caught out Lalabang, Lightning Unicorn, able to trade it back and watching now Wonton Dumpling, Jackie Chan, it's all up to him. Let's see how his prowess is gonna work on out and Wonton Dumpling, do they get silenced this early on? This leaves the door open for IBG if ever. XCC, he needs to stay alive right now. Lightning Unicorn on the hunt and on the prowl. They strike when it is hot. And this is such a testament to be made by Lightning Unicorn. Problem is, there's another squad knocking on their doorstep as well. Team Burger full engage. There's no thanks to anyone here. They want the fight now. And Team Burger playing from the tunnels to move forward. Yeah, indeed, and I think this is one of the big differences between how Wonton Dumpling wins fights versus someone like Lightning Unicorn. Uh, you know, they seem to just do it so quickly that they armor swap and then they're on to the next one. Meanwhile, LU have lost a member here and they're going to struggle to hold out, but this fortified position inside the RV, well, they actually, they say Sayonara and they're going to take the Valka ult on the back of Jackute here to try and get out. But, oh, you can see the shots coming from way... Oh my lord, Jack Cute is down to about 20 health, but they are going to make it out. They're actually going for a respawn beacon here somewhere up the back. Uh, breath of relief here for Jack Cute. He was one hemlock burst away from dying. Does get still scanned by the server beacon, but this is such ripples now moving forward into the rest of the scoreboard. With Wonton Dumpling gone, this means it's probably going to be either Iron Blood Gaming or Serenity that takes the win for this group. This is such a good sign for either team right now, knowing the fact that, well, that rotation path from Wants on Dumpling, it's not going to be very testy anymore. Lightning Unicorn fortifying so well. And I guess the point I want to really make here, Genome, is when Wants on Dumpling is hot, they are on fire, but when they get cold, it is just free, frigid of a reception. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like it was a, an ambitious push uh, trying to take out a very well-fortified team inside that caravan with the uh, you know, cool pylon and, and fences set up. But, uh, I mean, considering the other things they've done today, you can't really count them out of any fight. But, as you said, it does leave the door open. With them going out early, it means teams like IBG and Serenity are well-placed to take over. Yeah, single squad wipe is all IBG needs to have enough KP and take that lead away from Wonton Dumpling. Lightning Unicorn, on the other hand, do successfully get the respawn that we were talking about. But Legends Gaming Ooh. just gets interesting. Here we go again. Easy flash. The one first knocked down. And whenever they take a fight and decide to bail out of it, someone gets sniped along the way. It's been such a picturesque moment for the Legacy and the rest of and Serenity. They get the scan. stand up, and here comes trouble. IBG, they want to go for it here. Yeah, I mean, it was Legacy that actually got the knock from way downtown. So I was wondering if IBG would actually get that info. Uh, but they do. They get the scan, and they would have realized that Legends Gaming had one on the floor. They don't choose to push it, though. A very interesting decision by IBG. I thought would have thought they'd be full sending as soon as they realized there was a knocked member there. Maybe they're watching out for potentially Serenity nearby. Yep. And while that happened, Akuma, a beautiful third party there to knock down whoever was left between that X and Y and Overlook Entertainment scuffle. But Legends Gaming, they bring 
Easy flash back to the fight. He's been very sharp on the shots, but he hasn't had as much impact so far. T4 gonna be gone as well. And Iron Blood Gaming, they still have to contend with players nearby. Blair Claw on one side, Legends on the other, and IBG looking for any opportunity along the way as the tree cleaner. What is going on with the rev squad elsewhere? <laughs> They've taken down God Hand. Uh, good on him. Still, uh, again, one of our favorite names. Uh, fantastic addition to the, uh, the roster of incredible names we have here in the Apex South region. <laughs> Bearclaw Gaming posted up within Fragment. They're looking out towards teams like IBG and Legend Gaming, who are still on the outside. Why don't we hear what Legends Gaming are thinking going into this next phase of the game? Follow me to 70! That, that, that! I'm mulling! One in people, button, button on me. Uh, swing this, button, swing, this swing this, swing this. I'm here, I'm here. Uh, I got naded. Uh -huh. I saw. Press, press. No, uh, you can't press, you can't press. Shot from the right. Full team, full team. Two, two, two. Sorry, no. Oh, you're fucking gone. What the fuck? You got this one. And. Team above is completely like. No, no, no. I think it's only one guy that's like on the hill. Legends Gaming, man. They took the fight to IBG, and that eliminates the chances, I believe, of IBG actually taking that top slot away from Wonton. Who's gonna be happy about that? It's Sorrenti, but Legends still with a solo here. AD Flash, the only one still standing after everything is said and done. But keep an eye out. MDI Black and Akuma already trying to move around. BK Gaming as well. And the players, the teams that banked on the closer to Lava Siphon side kind of bring pull. It's not gonna pan out for them. The case Keeping is unreal. Akuma also trying to give chase to MDY Black, but what a turn of events to the top spot of our leaderboard so far. Yeah, that's uh, that is throwing a couple of wrenches in the works there. Um, potentially, teams down the bottom can start moving up now, but I think those 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 top two teams really did have such a lead that they should be safe for now. Um, do they pick up enough points? We'll see. We will see. MDY Black currently looking through um the teams below them there we've got uh, an evac going over the top of them of course that'll be akuma running around and then you've got team burger here um just trying to walk it in across the tracks can they do that safely does sharky have enough smoke to get them across this very dangerous part of their rotation Team Burger is still alive and kicking with the smokes, but keep an eye out for final start as well as they've been on a bit of a rampage so far. They already catch up Ash Esports, but they are left to two, left to one actually. And it's only the tree cleaner still alive here. MDY White, also a similar fight. They're going after Team Burger and anyone else they can see here. VK Gaming also a victim. Pylon being set on up and MDY White, they might be in trouble as they run into Burger now. MDY White's gone, final start as well. And chaos ensues as all these teams will start moving on to the the outskirts here. Team Burger, they've waited some time, but they're looking to finally put their mark on this series. Six kills for the team right now, as well as making to it to top six. They've got someone else's Watson Gen there, helping them out to, to help this position, making sure the grenades coming in don't worry them too much, as Waze actually putting some damage down long range with his frags. They now move up, five squads left, legends go down, and Team Burger looking to crack into the top ten. And look at this, deja vu for keep going gaming. Yes, it's outside of the next ring, but it's a similar position with a Kraber in hand. Team Burger though, they're looking for impact as much as possible. Moving forward now, and it's Serenity right in front of them. Here we go again, a game of legacies are afoot. Wade though, trying to go for the confirm. Seems like Team Burger is still good for the time being, and it's Andy Y Black instead. Someone they have to contend with all the way. MDY Black, they have a good vantage point. Keep going gaming. Also ready for the pinch. Five squats remaining. But from what I've seen so far, with Legacy still alive, the top five, it's place in points, actually bring Serenity to success. Yeah, I mean, KPG just had such a great day. 
um, as they are landing here on World's Edge over at Harvester. Of course, that's giving them fantastic rotations here into these two central circles here. And as you can see, with the Kraber coming down on oh! top, oh! he hits the shot on the Legacy and moves them even further up the leaderboard. Yo, I am easily impressed, and KH, you take my breath away with a shot like that. So Sorrenti's got to make it to top five, and that might be enough to take the spots. Well, top spots because of placement, but keep going gaming. They're now in trouble, as here comes Akuma to take the fight to them. Yukoi bringing damage, it's land from above one more time with a bow check. Tried to believe in Dark Veil for that cover. His teammates are gone. Will he be next? The spikes into play, and the Black merely an observer from this point on. Now they want to be a participant. Keep going is gone we're down left to two as team burgers also eliminate them and mdy black they're able to paint the town red with these kills as they will be our final winners of this set Exciting stuff again for our final match that's game number six done and dusted apex south you know we've produced the likes of Dark Zero and Moist Esports and wrapping up groups A versus C, um, you know, all you guys at home can definitely see that we're, this that this region will have some more contenders for those top spots at LAN. Um, you know, Gino, we've talked about Wonton Dumpling and Iron Blood Gaming um, going toe to toe and collecting insane kill points, but their reign of terror came to an end in that final game. Yeah, we've seen a lot of very aggressive teams uh, They've typically done quite well in the early stages of LAN and, and run amok. And, uh, you know, some have even managed to do that in the final lobbies like Dreamfire. Um, but it looks like we could potentially have some additions uh, in their ranks. You know, yeah, some teams like Wonton Dumpling. It'd be fantastic. It'd be so entertaining to see what they look like running through other regions as well, not just APAC South, but IBG. Um, I think they are also in top form, and I'm really excited to see them if they can grab one of those eight spots um, and then wreak havoc on the world. Yeah, so obviously, you know, we've taken out the heavy hitters, and that made a little bit of room for, like, uh, the likes of Akuma uh, or MDY Black Dax. Insane plays from, you know, these teams that are sitting a little bit lower on the bracket. Yeah, incredible step up from our top three for this game. You got Team Burger making their mark finally. And I guess that was my concern for Divine last time. It takes them so long to really get heated on up. And they navigate through the train tracks well to make it to the top three spot and get eight of those kills. Akuma as well, winning so many of those sudden engagements and just carving a path of destruction. But MDY Black, there were just so many times we watched them just keep an eye out of everyone else. They fended off Serenity. They fended off Keep Going Gaming. I think they also so we're able to get good catches on the VK gaming as well as final start. Shout out to the Revenant getting four kills, by the way. But <laughs> it, it just goes to show when you play that right alongside the crypto, it's more so that kind of game where you're playing a little bit more patient and they really hit their targets well in well-timed uh, outlets as well. Yeah, and you, as you can see here on our final scoreboard, Serenity coming out with the 78 points. You know, Wonton Dumpling, Iron Blood Gaming doing exceptionally well. You know, only a couple of points behind, but obviously getting knocked out quite early in that final match, which has just sort of opened the door or we'll say window for Serenity to come through, Genome. I mean, that's incredible uh, a turnaround of uh, fortunes there for Serenity, who start off, as we said, as a duo and then. Um, today come out and win their lobby grabbing the full 25 points for the split that is um, that's really a statement from them and honestly uh, a pretty big upgrade I think uh, in how they've been playing over the previous year of ALGS <laughs> Wonton Dumpling um, certainly recognizing some of their potential uh, with one of the biggest games we've ever seen in Apex South history I think it was 23 kills absolutely nuts Iron Blood Gaming uh, a team we did expect to do well um, up there at 73 points and then there's a bit of a drop off where keep going gaming uh, probably the best placing team of the day uh, yeah. who really you know had a couple of uh, shifts over towards them yeah. 
Yeah, and as all these sort of points, you know, we calculate up, uh, we do have our series points, you know, so it's still anybody's game here. But as we have a look um, at who's at the top here, Lightning Unicorn um, performing exceptionally well in our, our first week. Um, you know, they, they have been extremely consistent over the couple of matches that they've played. So, you know, that's kind of pushed them to the top there, um, along with Legends Gaming also performing, uh, sorry, performing consistently um, in our first week week um but you know serenity's just snuck up on in there as well uh this was a versus uh c dax so mm -hmm. we still have more games after this as you can see like boogie borders you know they didn't compete in these first six matches but we'll be seeing them shortly i wouldn't be surprised to see you want on dumpling ibg rack up even more points at the end of our day but for me i feel like the recovery from team burger in the last game does push them up higher onto the standings than we might have expected when they started off as divine so good on them serenity as well making it to that top three and that's just even though it will change sooner or later once we get b versus c making it the top three after playing as a duo in that first outing it really just goes to show serenity has put in the work and we've seen multiple times in such a chaotic lobby they're the team that takes multiple opportunities and seizes them so i'm very impressed with what we saw serenity do today because it's just a bit of a contrast to the full send to the full engage that we get from our other apex out teams yeah, exactly right. You know, our full sending teams of Wonton Dumpling and Iron Blood Gaming. I'm very interested to see when we have our next lot of groups. Um, so we'll have B versus C. You know, another hard hitting team that we saw in the first week was Boogie Borders. Uh, this is just going to be amazing to see these these teams that rack up these amazing kill points now battle it out together. Um, but guys, you know what? We're going to take ourselves a short break. You were just watching groups A versus C. Coming up shortly after the break, we're going to have B versus C. You're going to see the action. We're going to get it sorted. But first of all, go get yourself some snacks, have a stretch, and we'll see you shortly. Thank you. 